All right, it's seven o'clock. I'd like to open the January 17th meeting of the Wakefield Conservation Commission. Uh, first up will be a roll call. Ken. Here. Uh, Teresa. Here. Peter. Here. Uh, uh, Jim, are you there? I don't see Jim yet. I don't see Paul, are you there? I don't see Paul yet either. All right, uh, first up is the approval of the minutes from January 3rd. Anybody have any comments or questions concerning those minutes? And if not, would somebody like to make a motion to approve those minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Peter? Yes. Ken? Yes. Teresa? Yes. And I also vote yes. All right, next up is uh, 71 Whittier Road. I don't see a file number yet. Uh, public hearing, notice of intent for the construction of a 700 square foot addition in the buffer to the BVW. Is the applicant here? Hi, good evening. John Ogren from Hayes Engineering. Um, we prepared the, the plan for this filing and uh, I'm prepared to present this to the commission tonight. Uh, if I may, I, can I share my screen? Yeah, hold on for one second. We'll take care of that. Okay, John, go ahead. Okay, so um, as you stated, uh, this is property located at number 71 Media Road. Uh, it's an existing house with uh, an existing driveway, essentially surrounded on either side by existing homes. There are uh, two properties located to the rear. Um, one of his one's a wooded lot uh, and they front out on Montrose Ave. Um, 
<clears throat> as far as existing, um, the topography, essentially slopes from the road back towards the rear of the property. Uh, there's actually a fence that's located uh, that's on the side in the rear of the property and then slopes down to uh, a bordering vegetated wetland, which we, we flagged on the, out on the ground. Um, so this, <clears throat> what's before you is essentially a um, buffer zone project. What we're proposing is uh, an addition to the existing home. Uh, there'll be a small portion of the existing home be removed and then we'll be adding addition along part of the side and towards the rear of the property. I'll just zoom up on this a little bit. So as you can see, this proposed addition lies um, within an already a lawn area uh, in the rear of the property and on the side. Uh, as I stated, there was an existing fence. So all the activity will be located um, on the lawn and landscaping side of the fence and no closer to the wetland. So there's kind of already a, a, a good barrier between um, previous disturbance and, and the boring vegetated wetland. Um, just to give you an idea as far as distances, um, the addis proposed addition would be about six feet to the existing fence and about 13 feet closest point to uh, the boring vegetated wetland. I think that's pretty much summarizes what we're proposing. Uh, certainly answer any questions you might have. So John, it'd be no um, removal of the fence. The fence is intended to stay. No, the fence is it's proposed to just stay in place as it is today. Okay. And are you proposing any recharge? Um, no, no recharge is being proposed. I mean, the net increase in, you know, footprint of the, of the house itself is about 540 square feet. Um, so it's, it's fairly small and um, I'm not totally familiar with the area, but I know that this, this property itself is um, a slab, so there's no basement to it. And I, I kind of, it, it seems like there's probably high groundwater in this area. Do, are there any test pits? No, we didn't do any test pits. Okay. Uh, so the addition will be a slab construction. Correct. Okay. So can I just ask the question, and it, um, just, I'm just asking the question, um, the addition, could it be moved to the left so it's 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 totally outside the 25 foot buffer? Um, I, I believe the way, you know, I'm not architecturally, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I believe the way they wanted to utilize this addition, um, it worked out best to have it on this side, you know, located to this corner of the house. As I stated, it's 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 all in an area that's essentially lawn and landscaping now. So it's it's not yeah. like we're removing any vegetation. Um, and and the the fence does provide a good barrier between the the fence, you know, the kind of the lawn area and, and the boring vegetated wetland. John, is the house itself also on a slab or does it have a basement? No, it's a slab. Okay. And Rebecca, have you been out or has Elaine been out to check the wetland flag? No, not yet. We're still waiting okay. on a DEP file number um, also. So I, I knew yes, it, I heard that. So I knew it'd be going to the next meeting. So I figured uh, I'd put on Elaine's list. Okay, no, great. John, are there uh, gutters and, and downspouts on the house currently? You know, I, it's been a while since I've been out there. I, I don't recall. Okay.
Uh, there's no proposed trees coming down, correct? Yeah, maybe if, let me just stop sharing and share again here. Um, this is kind of a Google Maps aerial view. Okay. So you can kind of see the existing fence. And the proposed addition would be going basically in this area in the lawn, in the lawn area. Okay. It's a uh, very flat with a very, very slight grade heading back towards the uh, wetlands I could see on the um, on the map on the drawing. Correct. Yeah, it, it's as I said, it slopes from Whittier Road towards towards the rear of the property, but it's fairly flat. I don't really anticipate any real grade changes, um, you know, in the area of the addition. Does the driveway drain to the street? Does that drain to the back of the property? Um, and does the street drain into the driveway? Or the majority, the, of the, the majority of the driveway sheets towards the street itself. Okay. It kind of it comes up slightly to the driveway and then slows back. Okay. Yeah, and there's no, we're not we're not doing any any changes to the existing right. driveway. John, do you know, does it need any zoning relief? I'm sorry, what? Does it need zoning relief? Uh, no, it does not. Any other questions from the commission? What's between the edge of the lawn and the fence? on the there's there's a uh, like a landscaped area okay. there's a couple of spots along the um along the fence where there's some landscaping The um, paver patio will remain that's there. Yeah, yeah, the patio will remain. You know, a portion of it will be removed. Yeah. How close is the closest point to the uh, to the wetland? Um, the proposed addition, the closest is uh, 13 feet. And it's about six feet from the addition to the fence. Okay. I'm sorry. So where is the uh, where is the wetland? Really? Uh, where's the wetland? Oh, I see. It's the blue one. It's I this see. blue. It's the blue yep, yep, line. Yep, yep. Sorry. I see. Thank you. Yeah, I see it. Mm. Um, I for one would like to, you know, look at the site if we're going to make an accept. You know, we. I, I think. Me too. I think I can speak for the the group is that we feel strongly about our 25 foot rule, and while. I'm certainly willing to go and look at the site um, to see if there's exceptional circumstances. Um, I'm not willing to do it without without looking at that. Yeah, the hearing will remain open anyways, as there is no file number. So, yeah, yeah you could we could uh, plan a site visit. Bob, Bob, are you around this weekend? I actually am. Um, I am around Saturday. Saturday? Yes. Do you want to say Saturday at is eight eight too early or nine? Nine would eight, be okay. Nine? For me. Peter, is that okay with you? Yes. I could join. Hi, Paul. Paul, would you say yes or no? You can go or no. I could do that. Nine o'clock on Saturday would work. There's I four of us. Well. Oh, good. Hi. John, does that work for you? I, I am not available on Saturday. Um, I don't really know how critical it is. I mean, it, it should be fairly straightforward out on the ground, um, you know, with the fence and 
the edge lawn and the existing yeah. house. I don't, I don't, <laughs> is, I don't is think. The, is the addition staked out, John? We have not staked it out. We could do that if you would like. I think that'd be helpful. That yeah, would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Can you do that by Saturday? Sure. The, the addition, but also the 25 foot buffer where the addition is going to be installed, proposed. Do you want to, so like the corners of the addition and the 25 foot buffer? Yes. Yeah, that would be fine. Thank you. Is Jim on yet? Um, I talked to him today and he wasn't feeling well. So at the time when I talked to him, which is probably around lunchtime, he said he wasn't sure. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Um, John, I don't know if the applicant is also in the meeting right now or not, but um, could you confirm if nine o'clock would be okay with us being there? Yeah, I, I can certainly contact um, the owner and make sure that that, that that's okay. I can let Rebecca know if it's not, but I'm sure it will be. Okay. And Rebecca, do you mind sending an, an invitation for us? I'm doing it right now. Thank you. All right, anything else uh, from the commission regarding this? Any questions from the public? This is Diane Purcell. I will be there on Saturday. Okay, excellent, Diane. We will um, we'll see you Saturday morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Quick, quick question: Are the flags still out there? You know, the wetland flags. I believe I haven't looked by the fence lately. Oh, well, when we'll 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 check that when we go out and stake out the the addition and the buffer. Okay. Thank you. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, we'll move on. We'll plan for a site visit at nine on Saturday and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have uh, 14 Sunset Drive enforcement order, uh, review of the restoration report and return to compliance. Uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Chair. My name is attorney Jesse Schomer. I represent the Rosenfield family uh, here representing them with respect to this matter. Um, also on the line tonight is Mike DeRosa of DeRosa Environmental, whose office prepared the restoration plan and uh, planting plan that was recently filed with your conservation okay. agent uh, subsequent to the last hearing. Uh, we're here to answer any questions if the commissioners have any, but um, barring that, we would request issuance of a return to compliance with respect to this uh, enforcement order as all of the proposed work has been completed as of now. I think we were just questioning at the last meeting if the vegetative buffer um, at the opening had been done as we couldn't see it from the pictures that uh, we were looking at. So I... I'll, I'll defer to uh, to Mike DeRosa to, to confirm that. I can also put up the restoration plan via share screen to show uh, where the uh, winterberry plantings were, were placed to block uh, the ability to, to park vehicles in the area that was restored, which would, as discussed at the commission's previous hearings was a matter of concern. Uh, yeah, we just to, wanted, to, I, think, I think we wanted to confirm that they actually were, but we just couldn't see it from the pictures. I can yeah. respond to that, Jesse, if you want. Yes, please, Mike, thanks. Yeah, for the record, Mike DeRosa, DeRosa Environmental. I was actually there the day of the plantings and I made sure that we had both shrubs and we also put a red maple uh, tree right in front of that area as well. So it's, it's densely vegetated and wow. um, we heard the commission say that they wanted that area blocked. So that's what we did. Um, so it is there. All right, excellent. Yeah, I think that was the only outstanding uh, question that we had. Um, are there any other questions from the commission?
Rebecca, did you go look at the, did you go look at that? No, I didn't, but Elaine did. And she uh, said it looked good. And she had some pictures of her own. I think I submitted them prior okay. to the last, last meeting. meeting. So yes. yeah, okay. so I think this is all we were waiting for is that report. Okay, sounds good. Okay, excellent. Um, so then we should uh, have a entertaining vote uh, to return to compliance if somebody would like to make that motion. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Ken? Yes. Paul? Yes. Peter? Yes. Teresa? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Rebecca, you'll um, take care of that. Yeah, I'll send it around to you guys before I send it out, only because um, I haven't written, we haven't written too many of those. So just to show you what I think it's going to look like. Okay. Yeah. Sounds fun. I don't know how this happened, Bob, but we appear to be on schedule. So far. <laughs> All right, so excellent. So Rebecca will take care of that. And uh, thank you, Jesse. Thank you very much, commissioners. Thank you. All right. Rebecca, are you ready to move on or? All right, so yeah, right on time, 720 DEP 313-322, Millbrook Lane Condo, status update review, partial as built. Is the applicant here? Hello, uh, Ryan Severance, uh, attorney for um, Millbrook Estate. Uh, right here. Hi, Ryan. Peter Rogan with Hayes Engineering, and I represent the applicants as well. Hello, Peter. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> as you know, uh, we had sent over, and it was just before the last meeting, um, a partial as built from Peter. Um, I do not know whether the uh, commission has had an opportunity to review it. Um, but I know that uh, Peter is prepared to speak about it and speak about where things stand. Go ahead, go ahead, Peter. If, if, if I might, uh, we started an as built back in 2000 and I think uh, three when this uh, uh, project was completed and the as built was never completed because the work was never completed. And uh, the commission some couple of months ago requested an as built. And since that time, we've been trying to find out what the status of certain uh, aspects of the project were. Most notably, um, is the commissioners, are they all familiar with the file? Yes. So most notably, the when this first came in, uh, the commissioners wanted more done as far as stormwater management was concerned. And to that end, we added two rather large infiltration areas in the uh, northeast and uh, southwest ends of the building uh, that were designed to take the roof front off. And uh, we were trying to determine whether those were ever built because there's no uh, evidence of them on the ground. There was no as built of them in the ground ever done. And as a consequence, we couldn't determine that. We also were trying to determine um, the aspects, some other aspects of the drainage system, which included the uh, catch basins that were uh, proposed in the uh, driveway in front of the building to drain the parking lot. Some of those appeared to be missing. Uh, and it, it turns out we thought one of them might be buried, but I think that was probably never constructed. Uh, and then there was uh, a section of berm that was missing, which uh, was allowing water to escape into the front retention pond area um, that uh, was missing. So uh, that berm section was added. Uh, we did talk to the maintenance people on the uh, uh, on the on the uh, condominium and found that uh, most likely the infiltration was not constructed 
and the catch basins were not constructed. And uh, unfortunately, that means that uh, the stormwater management criteria of the, uh, the uh, order of conditions was not met. Uh, and I think we would need some guidance from the commission as to how uh, the applicants might uh, proceed from here. I think that the, uh, the owners of this condominium are innocent victims of uh, an inept developer who did not meet his requirements to the town. Um, and it was not uncommon, don't, uh, you got to put this in time perspective. This project was completed in, I believe, 2003. Uh, the uh, the uh, request for a certificate of compliance or the uh, execution of a uh, certificate of compliance with the Conservation Commission was not often made a uh, requirement of the close on a property. And as such, all of these units were sold without any certificate of compliance. Now, I understand that uh, Rebecca has kept uh, Gary Bogue of the DEP informed about uh, this project, and uh, I tried to contact him today. He didn't call me back, and they're in the midst of moving, among other things. I'm told that they're also all going to be working on their cell phones rather than on Centrex telephone numbers, but I did happen to have his personal cell phone, so I called him and left a message, and I would intend to discuss with him uh, what might be a next step for these people. Uh, I should point out that um, in the interim period, uh, the uh, condo association has made an effort to uh, handle some of the concerns that the neighbor has. I happen to know the neighbor personally, I was somewhat friendly with him. I went and met with him. Um, and uh, I think some of his uh, concerns are well founded. And uh, the commission has, uh, excuse me, the uh, association has already moved to uh take some actions to help uh solve his issues and are prepared to take additional actions to to uh, uh further satisfy him so i think that's where we're at and uh i i think we need to look to the commission as to how they think this needs to proceed i don't think it's realistic to ask these people to uh bring the stormwater management system up to uh, the standard that it was approved at um, and uh, I think that the efforts that they've made are at least in the right direction and that we need to come up with some kind of a compromise in order to let this move forward and be done with. Peter, so that I can understand what would be the, uh, what do you think would be the cost to, I mean, you're saying it's unrealistic or unfair, or I, I forget the word you just used, but I just want to understand because the cost to do it as design would be, I just want to understand what that number might be. Well, what, what happened was uh, when this was originally submitted, it was submitted with a uh, mitigation plan that was simply a runoff basin. And the commission asked if more could be done uh, to, uh, from a stormwater <laughs> management standpoint. And we submitted a subsequent uh, filing with the commission, which added two large infiltration areas on the north and south ends of the building. I, I haven't got a contractor's price, but I would guess that there's probably fifty or sixty thousand dollars would be spent trying to uh, build those units and and uh, bring the uh, roof drains into them. Not not I mean, not to run mention, the paved areas. Go not, ahead. Not Go not ahead. to mention uh, a pretty significant disruption because that is where the unit owners park, and there would be a pretty significant disruption of. Uh, the, those parking areas. And, and how many units are there? There are 40. So it's a thousand dollars a unit or two thousand, you know, fifteen hundred dollars. Right. I'm just trying to understand. I, I just want to start out with to do the job right. What is it going to cost? Um, that because that really frames your your uh, the conclusion that you drew, Peter, which is that it's unreasonable to uh, to insist that the work be done. Uh, I mean, uh, while the while the association has been going through this process to start with, it's already expended a fair amount of money uh, on this. Uh, so adding to it, I mean, it, it 
divided amongst the units, it might look like a small amount of money, but it, it, I, I don't think that it really is. I, I think it, it's going to end up being a pretty significant amount of money for each one of those unit owners. You know, and I think that it's not the unit owners that uh, did anything wrong here or failed to, uh, to do anything. It was the developer initially who failed to do it. And, and I think to some extent, uh, nobody in the town followed through with it. I mean, uh, there's a history here. I don't want to get into it, and I don't know the full circumstances. But the developer did not. This was a 40B, and the developer did not live up to the requirements of the 40B in the town. And uh, uh, they, these people are not the perpetrators of the, uh, of the problem. They're the, they're the victims. Um, and, uh, Peter, how, how many units are affordable? Do you know? 25%, uh, I believe, had to go at the affordable price uh, at the time this was done. One out of four units. Is the roof then, runoff currently going into that infiltration area? What's that? Is the roof runoff going into that infiltration area? The retention area in the front. Yeah. yeah. There is a, the, uh, no, we don't believe so. Although I haven't been able to totally figure out how it was done. I did uh, go down and meet with the thing, and I know the commission felt that nothing was being done during these past months. But that's uh, far from the truth. I met the uh, the uh, person who maintains the grounds there. And uh, we looked down the manhole at the south and south uh, westerly end of the uh, uh, project, and there's a pipe that comes in to that manhole. It shows on the as-built plan, and he believes that's where all the roof drains come in. The roof drains are definitely um, plumbed into the ground, but you just don't know where they go from there. Okay. Now, there's not good access to uh, to the gutters to determine whether the die where they go, but um, I, I haven't seen any pipes. Although, um, Ryan, you mentioned that uh, there was a, some sort of an illicit pipe that was mentioned that the commission wanted blocked. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> where, where was that? I, there was a small pipe that had been drilled through the wall um, and installed and that pipe has since been capped. It was not related to the uh, roof runoff uh, in any way. It was a small pipe. It had been, it had been put through the wall. Rebecca mentioned it uh, during the last meeting and had mentioned it to me previously. And I did send along a photo showing that that pipe has been capped. Was water going through that pipe onto the abutters property? I'm not sure that anyone has any evidence that water was actually going through that pipe onto the abutters property, but I can understand why it needed to be capped uh, to prevent any water from going there. The pipe was right over one of the stormwater basins. And if the stormwater basin had filled for some reason, I can see water escaping through that pipe onto an abutting property. Um, and, and certainly it made sense to cap that off and prevent that from being able to occur. I, I think Peter and I have discussed and, and, and uh, you know, there's, and I've discussed with uh, the board members uh, of the condominium trust and no one can think of an, an event that has occurred that has caused serious flooding um, at this place. Um, I know that Peter spoke with um, Mr. Cresta, the, the neighbor. I know that he has spoken with uh, the commission um, about some concerns that he had. Uh, I think that, you know, the association is already incurring, and I did send along uh, before the last meeting, uh, they're, they're digging out that front uh, retention basin to deal with uh, Mr. Cresta's concerns of, of, that, of that flooding by installing rock at the bottom of that uh, retention pond to help deal with that. They did that at Peter's recommendation. Um, and and it, was a, it was a pretty, it was a fair amount of money. I wanna say it was almost $11,000 uh, to do that work. Um, so I, I, I just wanna offer that out there as I, I don't think that, that the way the system is currently set up, while 
not in accordance with the original setup. I don't think that there's indication that it is regularly failing to manage the water. And that's something that Peter and I have been discussing. Yeah, I talked with uh, Mr. Crestor. I had him as a client and, and uh, I knew the Crestor family. In fact, the Crestor family were the people that sold this uh, land to the Felides uh, to build the 40B. Um, and uh, his main concern, uh, he did mention that the, uh, the water levels had gotten quite high I believe on two occasions from the pictures that he had, that's two occasions since like 2003. Um, but uh, his main concern is the uh, uh, invasive species that grow on the floor of the pond. And the department has uh, indicated time and again that a, uh, a, a, a detention basin like this that's man-made that you dig does not become a bordering vegetated wetland. And so we made the recommendation that we put stone in the bottom of it uh, for two purposes. One, to increase infiltration, which it would help it not get sealed up with uh, fines, although there are, are fines that could have accumulated in the last 20 something years. Um, but also to, it makes it easy to keep the rooted plants out of the, they, they can come up through the stone, but if they do, it's easy to pull them out as individuals before they get to be a, uh, a thick growth of Phragmites like there is there now. And so that's gonna go a long way anyway to uh, responding to Mr. Cresta's concerns. I don't know if he's on tonight, but I've talked with him directly and I know that that's uh, one of the primary things that he was interested in. Hi, Peter, I'm his grandson, I'm on tonight. Yeah, hi, we've met before. Yep, yeah, I was at the meeting with you and him. Yep. Mark, have I you seen an improvement? I have definitely seen an improvement in the vegetation, but the um, the pond is still holding water now. And is it coming onto the property? Um, I'm actually outside right now, I can go check. I uh, just got home from work a few minutes ago. Peter, did you have um, some alternative plan that you were thinking of or suggestion? Right, as far as the water is concerned, I submitted an alternative plan back in, uh, I'm looking at my notes here, I think it was 2003 to the Board of Appeals. Uh, and had a meeting with uh, the building inspector and I don't know who all else, and it was determined that uh, that uh, if a, a pump system could be built, uh, and then as I understand it, the pump system was made to be taken out. I yet to determine exactly why, but uh, my thoughts were, uh, I mean, there's, there's no way from a gravity flow standpoint to drain the bottom of the basin. The DEP suggests if you have a basin such as this that holds water, um, that you put an under drain in it. Well, we can put an under drain in it, but the under drain would have to be pumped. And my suggestion at that time was if uh, either the buildup of water, and I've, I've observed it several times recently and, and it hasn't been building up, it's been infiltrating, but if the buildup of water becomes a problem, that it be manually pumped out at a period of low flow, which uh, I think is a perfect solution. Uh, it's my understanding that Ray Felitti was willing to do that uh, and built such a system and then uh, was told to take it out. I'm not sure of the circumstances of that, whether it was the Board of Appeals or it was not the building inspector, I know, but it was either the Board of Appeals or the Conservation Commission told them to take it out, I guess. Did Hayes do the engineering work on this? On this yes, we did. Yeah. Did you yeah, tell we, you tell Ray that he, that he there's whole sections of this that he just didn't do. What's that? Did you tell the Felites that that there's whole sections of this plan that that would that were never put in place? Um, I mean, I guess what I'm saying, what what I don't understand is you said it appears that from looking at it now that the work was never done. But isn't that something you would have known? I mean, I mean, isn't that part of what your job is to to 
at least know whether the work was done or not? Well, if I'm required to do inspections, yes. But we did no inspections here. I don't know whether conservation did any inspections or not, or the building inspector did any inspections. There's no requirement for, there was no requirement in the order of conditions for reporting. And you got to bear in mind that this was 22 years ago or 21 years ago. Um, the sophistication of the implementation of the, of the uh, stormwater management is, is changed dramatically in the last 20 something years. As, as had, I would point out the uh, general requirement of title attorneys to look for a certificate of compliance. I would agree with you there. And I think that an order of conditions issued today that asked for subsurface uh, uh, infiltration would have asked for an as built to be completed at the time it was done. There's, I just checked the order uh, before I came on this meeting and there was no such requirement in the order. Um, it's possible that Felitti didn't understand what he had to do. I can't speak for him, uh, you know, but, but, and I, I, I've said repeatedly that I can't establish that it was done. I haven't established that it wasn't done either, but I find no evidence that it was done. And so I suspect that it wasn't done. Um, you know, yeah, I would think there would be some evidence, some pictures. Uh, I asked the, the uh, condominium association if they had any pictures and so forth. But failing the requirement of an as built or an inspection, I mean, and we do inspections of that, those kinds of facilities all the time now. Yeah, an as built is a standard um, requirement in our order of conditions now. Well, and an as-built plan was required at the completion of construction, but the but the uh, the infiltration area would have to be an interim as-built. Rebecca, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, yeah, this is what I was just thinking. Let me go through and put together a little bit of a history. Um, thanks for the information, Peter. I, I had no idea what was happening. Um, let me also speak with Gary Bogue. Peter, I think you mentioned that you've been talking to him, trying to figure out what to do next. Um, and maybe we can just come up with something about how we're going to move forward. I don't know right now. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so I'll speak with Gary Bogue to see what his suggestion is. And then I'll read through everything and try to try to put down a timeline and then gather up what information I have. And then why don't we reconvene? Mm -hmm. And just the fifty to sixty thousand is that for all three of these uh, these stormwater management areas? Uh, no, that's to, east and that's southwest. To, that's my estimate to put the infiltration in that was required. The catch basins that weren't put in, I believe now weren't put in. Uh, I don't know, that would cost a fortune. You have to dig up all the pavement and regrade it. And frankly, um, we don't like to sheet water across a roadway like that or a driveway like that. Um, but it's not critical to the stormwater management plan. Um, so uh, I don't think that that's something that uh, maybe would be necessary. Um, I haven't really looked into the other basin, but I, I think uh, I don't know whether it's of the right size or not. I got an ass built, but I, I haven't looked into that. Okay. The, the, the other basin needs to be cleaned out too. And I've tried to encourage the uh, uh, condominium association to do so. Um, there's been no maintenance at all in these basins for uh, 20 or more years. Um, that's why I think they're silted up and I think they, they definitely have grown all kinds of invasives. And again, I think the other basin could be cleaned out as well. Um, and I think the same thing goes for that basin. It does not become a VVW just because it has wetlands plants in it. Are cleaning of those but, basins in the O&M plan? Uh, yeah, it's in the, uh, there is an O&M plan. Uh, it talks about mowing the basins, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, which is what the DEP's recommendation had been. 
Uh, but nothing and nothing has been done to the basins in 20 years. Well, the, the front basin has since been cleaned out. Well, other than right, other than the work that's been done recently, mm -hmm. I should, I guess I should yeah. make that exception. And I'm going to try to get down there to see if they started the stoning. Um, mm -hmm. but no, I, they I, have not, they have not been able to start the stoning yet because of the weather. Mm -hmm. They are, they have a, they have a proposal that, that they've accepted and they're going to start the stoning, but they have not been able to start that work because of the weather. It sounds like the O&M plan should be looked at again and make, and see if there's any other deficiencies, uh, that are not being done with the O&M plan. Are the condominium trustees aware of the O&M plan? They are no, they, now. I don't think they, they were. They they were not they were not previously. That's that's the problem. The problem with this is not an association that did not want to do these things. The problem is an association and a board that simply did not know that these were requirements. Thank you. Unfortunately, the developer, uh, you know, I my my firm represents a lot of condominiums, and this can be a problem generally with condominiums uh, where when developers transfer control over to a board of, of unit owner elected trustees, they simply don't get all of the information. And that's exactly what occurred here. And there has been board turnover, of course, through the years. Um, and so, uh, you know, there aren't a bunch of trustees that have been here from the beginning that should have known. It, it's just simply not that situation. But they do know about the requirements now, and they've been relying on, you know, Peter and his recommendations as to what to do to help deal with the issues that Mr. Cresta was concerned about. And now looking at, you know, what is the as built situation? You know, all systems require maintenance. And it's, you know, unfortunately, we hear this, you know, too often that sometimes the uh, maintenance isn't being done uh, for whatever reason. And I, I've spoken with, with Peter and with the trustees about the fact that, for instance, the uh, installation of the stone in that front basin will help mitigate the amount of maintenance needed. Not remove it, but help mitigate the amount of maintenance needed. Um, and, and, you know, that's one more reason why they decided to proceed with the that project. Are we the only town board with a dog in the hunt on this? I think the only other board that had jurisdiction, it was a comprehensive permit from the Board of Appeals. Uh, and on the pump issue, uh, I appeared before the Board of Appeals back in 2003 to notify them that that's what we wanted to do as a solution. I don't have any information as to whether any action was taken by the Board of Appeals or not. Mm -hmm. I was going to go to the effort to try and find those records, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know how easy they might be able to find in town hall, you know. I just didn't know if any 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 negotiated solution would need to involve the uh, Board of Appeals as well. That's I just the only reason I'm asking is who, you know, who should who should have a seat at the table? Well, it was so a I, permit issued by the Board of Appeals. The only, only other uh, authorities that have jurisdiction are uh, conservation and under the state law are only not the local bylaw and the Board of Health. The comprehensive permit covers everything else. Because it was a 40B. Yeah, in, a, in the case of a 40B, which this was. And uh, this was discussed with the building inspector back at that time, too, uh, as far as pumping the basin if it gets too high. And I don't know why that isn't a good solution. I think it's a great solution, frankly. And I, I, I thought about making the pump automatic. And then I said, gee, if the pump is automatic, it could be added to the uh, the uh, flood flow, so to speak, or the high flow. So I said it should be manual so that it could be pumped after the storm and would go into the other basin and then out 
ultimately to the Mill River. So it would be um, go through two, two uh, d d detention, well, a retention basin and a detention basin. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, the manhole and everything is there. I don't know, is the electric service there too, Ryan? I'm not sure. Um, I, I did not see any evidence uh, that the electric service was there uh, when, when we did our, when, uh, you know, I was there for a site visit. I can inquire uh, to have the, uh, one of the trustees look into it to see if he can locate any electric service nearby. I have been having the uh, one of the trustees keep an eye on the levels of water in the that front retention pond in particular, so he he has an eye for it. What has he been reporting? Could you? And he he's been reporting that that while there is some water in the basin that it has not reached uh, any any level that he feels is uh, 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 a problem. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe the uh, uh, Mr. Crest's son-in-law was on. Was it twice that that you had seen such an occurrence? Or I know you showed me pictures, but yeah. So there was one time that uh, it the water level was actually just inches from our foundation, um, and then there was another time that it it did flood a portion of the yard for uh, quite some time of the year. Yeah, I mean, one and, of the problems um, with the filtration basin is that the infiltration is not great in these basins, and it says that in the in the uh, stormwater report. But in a frozen ground condition, you don't get any infiltration at all. This is true of any open water infiltration basin, and so the need to pump it could occur at, at different times. Um, but I think there's plenty of notice that the water level is rising, and that. And, and I don't think it's ever rained for seven days and seven nights or anything that, that, that there wasn't been, been an op a dry opportunity to pump it out through the stormwater management area. Right. And, and I do know um, it's usually in the spring um, that the water level gets much higher uh, due to the snow melt, uh, you know, depending on the, the snow that we had that year. I know uh, a few years ago when we had the record level of snow uh, was one of the years that it was, it did flood uh, uh, quite a bit. I think you'd be safe from the record snow this year. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, it could still happen, but it hadn't been much of a snow year yet. No, not yet. Uh, Rebecca, I did send you an email with the picture of what the pond looks like right now. Could you put that up, Rebecca? Is there enough light to see it? Yeah, my my uh, phone takes very good pictures at night. Let me. I'll forward it to Bob because I'm on two different computers, a work one and my personal one. So I just okay, yeah. Forward. Just just give me a couple minutes. Yep. I mean, I've been observing it. Not not every rainstorm or anything, but the last couple of big rainstorms we've had, and it seems to be fine. It. Uh, it builds up some and then it goes down and that's what it's supposed to do. I think that probably in the springtime, you got the snow melt, you got frozen ground condition likely, although not this year. And uh, that all leads to the fact that it's gonna retain more water than you'd like, like to have it. Yeah, and high water table. Well, yeah, that's in the spring as well, yeah. yeah. So Bob, I sent it to you. It's just a matter of how fast it's gonna go through the system. Um, Peter, can I ask a quick question? That pump situation that you were talking about, are you saying that you would put a pump system in place in that front basin so when it gets to a certain elevation, you would pump it out towards the back of the building? Yeah, what the system did, I, I, I submitted a, uh, a sketch as to how the system would work and what was partially built. Uh, it would be manually operated and it would be an electric pump and it would pump into the, okay, there you have it. So it's got 
a fair amount of water in it now. Yeah, and, and that water has been there for a little while now. And yeah. are we looking, so uh, is your property, is your grandfather's property closest to? On the left where that green fence is, is our okay. property. Gotcha. Yeah, the, the first effort they made was to, uh, um, to go in and cut down. You can see the amount of invasives that there are here. They're so thick you couldn't blow smoke through them. Um, and the first effort was to go down and cut the in, uh, invasives. Uh, they did it in a strip. I don't know why they didn't do it in the whole basin. And again, there is nothing in the regulation that says that you can't cut down the uh, invasives out of a, a basin. The other thing, this is a retention basin. It's designed to retain the water, not detain it, because it has no outlet. So um, you could expect it to be there for some time. But that level could easily be pumped down. I mean, it's probably, how, how deep is that water? A foot and a half or so? Uh, I'd say at, at least eight inches at the minimum. I'm not trying to go yeah. in there and measure it right now. <laughs> No, and I wouldn't want to go in there and cut the weeds out now either. When they cut them out, it was dry. Yes, they were very, very lucky because I've never seen that in the 20 years that I've been in this area. I've never seen it dry. By the way, whether right or wrong, I did explain this at some point in an earlier meeting and have explained it to Rebecca by email. Uh, there was an understanding that there should be vegetation in that basin. That's part of the reason why it wasn't cut down. Everyone recognizes now that that was incorrect, but there was an understanding that vegetation was helping it. Certainly once it was pointed out to them that it was not, you know, they did cut it back. Yeah, uh, the, I, DE, the DEP I, actually talks about vegetating the basins, but we've found that that just leads to clogging of the basin. They, they infiltrate the best if they have a stone base, and you can control the weeds the best. And I, 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 we've done any number of them with stone bases and, and uh, I really think that's the way to do it. And again, it was not designed to be a replicated wetland at all. So here's a question I have too. So if this is meant to hold water or to, to retain the water, should it be fenced on all four sides? No, it could be. That's the old attractive nuisance argument. I'll let Ryan answer that question. I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything that says it has to be. So I'm just thinking of drowning risk with you know the kids and everything. I'm I'm just I'm just asking because I'm curious. I'm not pushing for that. I'm I'm just genuinely curious because I know swimming pools, by law, have to be fenced in. Yeah, no, if you have a pond on your property, it doesn't necessarily have to be fenced in, but I think that the insurance companies need to know about it. It looks like um, there's water on the other side of the fence right now, right where my cursor is. I, I don't well? believe so. I can go check. But yeah, it looks like the groundwater might be high. That's, that's all stone. Okay. Um, that we've put down. So I'm not seeing any, see lots of snow, but no, there's no water. Um, okay. I mean, I can send another picture if you want. That's, there's no that's water fine. Yet. It's good. Thanks. Does it make sense if, if um, Rebecca, after you talk to um, EEP, I don't know in terms of um, Peter's recommendation about a pump, whether he thinks that makes sense and then and then if he thinks that makes sense whether we go to the town and say what about a pump or um i was just thinking something similar and i think bill renault is on this call and perhaps we need to ah. um, loop him in because it sounds like um we're going to need his expertise on some of this stormwater design so Hopefully he's listening right now <laughs> and would right. be willing to tell us what he's thinking. Um, I guess it'd probably be easiest that we do this earlier rather than later. So, Bill? Yeah, no, that I think that makes a ton of sense. I just need to get up to speed, obviously. So Yeah, yeah. Um, I know I feel like I need to go over it too, but any ideas yeah. or thoughts? Um, I mean, I think, all, I think all of it depends on what's out there. So let me get myself up to speed on it and I can make a recommendation. All right, that sounds That's good. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank of you. course. Just to make one thing clear, I didn't get to talk to Gary Bogue. I tried to talk to him, I called him, but I, I'm, I'm gonna to continue to try to call him and I'd be glad to talk to him with you, Rebecca, if, if, if you want. Um, yep. I was thinking the same thing. I'll, I'll send him an email. He's usually pretty decent at responding to my emails. I haven't ever called him and I'll just copy you. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure where this goes. Um, I definitely wanna have his input about how he thinks we should tackle this. Um, so yeah, let's just keep chatting and, and see where it goes. Yeah, Rebecca, I've had the most luck with emailing him as well. Yep. Yeah, okay, good. I'll, I'll do it Thursday and see, <laughs> see what, I don't know what to do from here. See what we do. All right, um, anything else regarding this for tonight? Peter, do you have anything else? All right. No, I don't, sir. No. No, but I, let's. Um, I'm not going to reschedule it um, for any hearings for now until we sort more things out. Is that okay with everybody? We're just going to. Mm -hmm. just, I just want to make sure that everyone's okay with that scenario of, uh, and we'll. Pro I'm not sure when we'll come back, but when we do come back, we'll have a lot more information. Is that okay with everyone? I think that makes sense. Me too. Well, and I think by that time we should have gone forward with our cleaning out of this space and then the stoning of the bottom of it so that it will not be the objection to the neighbor that it's been in the past. Okay. And I, and I have to say that I did agree with him. I mean, I, I've known Mr. Cresta for a long time and that's why I volunteered to go down and talk with him. And I, and I ended up agreeing with him that I think that the, the, uh, something should have been done and maybe they didn't understand or whatever. And I, I think it's been a learning curve, but we've far from been doing nothing over the past three months. I can tell you that. Mark, are you okay with that? If we just hold tight until we get more information? I'm good. Okay, good. Yeah, if, if you could just uh, reach out to me when you do reschedule it, just so I know when the meeting will be. Yep, sure. And if you haven't heard anything in a while and you want to just send me an email, I can give you an update. You know I will. <laughs> <laughs> I do. All right. Uh, anything else regarding Millbrook Lane condos? And... I, I have nothing else. Okay. Okay. Right, thank so... you, Paul. Good to see you all again. All right. Thank you, Peter. Good to see you, Peter. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. All right. Take thank care. You. Thank you, guys. All right, Rebecca, you ready to move on? Okay. All right, so next up we have DEP 313620, 100 Hemlock Road, Northeast Metro Regional Vocational School. Um, review of revised plans, discussion of roundabout, discussion of filing with ZBA. And uh, that's what we have on the agenda. Hi, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dave Conway for uh, Niche Engineering for the project. Good evening, David. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. So uh, last Thursday, we last met on the 3rd. Um, and this past Thursday on the 12th, we submitted uh, revised materials. Now, we, my plan wasn't to, you know, walk, page walk folks through those. It was really just to, to, to point out what we submitted and, and where you can find your the different information that's been submitted and in, in, in basically the form of our response, um, if that's okay. I mean, the, the, you know, the stormwater report itself is almost a thousand pages and there's 72 pages of plans that have been resubmitted and, and I don't know why, but um, if that, I don't know if the expectation was that we do a page flip, I, I think we'd be here until the next meeting if we, if we were to try to do that. Um, so Did if we I was want to share some my... of our preliminary questions first, Bob? Well, I, I guess a couple of things. Did you submit a new plan that shows the roundabout? So we did not. We got word that the town was, that a roundabout was strongly desired. Um, we got that word very late. So the plans that were submitted 
as such, show the T intersection, which we've been showing all along. Now, our plan moving forward is to develop a plan showing a roundabout so that we can quantify the impacts of a roundabout as they relate to um, the Wetlands Protection Act. So, and, you know, the, the previously a roundabout had been investigated in the earlier version of the, where the driveway was when it was close to the wetlands. And at that point, the impacts were, were solely buffer zone impacts. Um, and I'm not even sure any of those buffer zone impacts had extended into the 25 foot. Now where we've pulled the, the driveway farther away from the wetlands, the impacts will be le less. But the, again, the plan is for us to develop that plan enough to share those impacts with you. But the, the amount of that, you know, it's, it's not going to, in my estimation, you know, the amount of impervious, which will quantify the impacts that will quantify aren't in any way substantially changing, like what we've presented as it relates to the Wetlands Protection Act last Thursday. Um, would there be a change to the replication areas and or impact to the buffer? So the I, I'm sure the buffer zone won't be exactly the same, but they'd probably be different in the order of tens to tens of feet as opposed to thousands of feet or anything like that. It's it's not it's, so I, just to, so folks know, I'm not and I'm not trying to to you know whistle past the graveyard in any way. Right now we're showing the T intersection. It has three lanes it, and the sidewalk. Um, the one lane that comes in, two lanes that leave, and then the sidewalk. If we move to a rotary, the rotary will only have two lanes. Now it has a little bit of a flare at the end, the lanes get a little bit wider, but it's it's only two lanes and a, and a sidewalk as opposed to three. So the impacts will be different, but they won't be in any way substantially different uh, um, as far as, you know, overall, you know, moving the number really of what what the impacts are to the wetlands. Um, so that was our plan for the rotary because we got that word late Tuesday with the, with the submission deadline for Thursday and us well into at that point having spent a good tail of time and effort preparing that submission. Um, I don't know, did you, do you want to cover any other questions? Um, I don't, I know Rebecca did submit a um, pretty extensive list of questions that we have been um, gathering uh, to you. I don't know uh, if you've responded yet or are working on the responses to those questions. So we got those, I didn't get those, those compiled comments and there's also um, engineered comments. We didn't get those until uh, Thursday morning with us trying to get the submission to Rebecca uh, Thursday morning before noon. So we are working on a response to those. Um, we actually already have a draft. We've circulated among the, the we'll circulate among the consultants so we can compile it and, 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 and respond back as appropriate. What the, the submission that we sent in Thursday included a response letter that had our understanding of the comments to date. So those include um, step, you know, comment by comment responses to the two BSC review letters and to um, what our understanding was um, for outstanding questions from the, from the, from the public, from the Conservation Commission. Um, and in, uh, you know, including some like that, that were emailed in. Um, so the preliminary look at the comments that we received Thursday morning, a lot of them seem to be covered in some way of, of from the previous response or they're, they've been addressed in the revised materials that be, have been submitted. So we'll, we'll take our time to kind of point, you know, to respond as appropriate and to point out where the answers are for those. Okay. And Matt, did you have a chance to take a look at, at the responses to your, to your, um, Report. I yeah, I'm Matt Byrne with BSC Group. Um, yeah, I have taken a, a first run through them. Um, by and large, nothing, nothing sort of um, 
stood out as, you know, nothing really caught my attention as, as kind of off base or anything like that. So um, I'll, I'll want to give them more attention, of course. Um, but, um, but generally speaking, I think I'm fairly satisfied with what I've seen. And how about the um, the um, the other BSC consulting having to do with the stormwater? Uh, Debbie Dom, I don't know if he's with us tonight. I'll see him on call. Um, so I can't speak for for Dom. Um, I know there's fairly extensive stormwater management comments, but also that um, you know just informally he, he said that things are looking reasonably good um but again i don't want to speak on um so so i'm not sure where that stands and and with a question about where what happens what's happening with the zba is, is that for that's not for you matt no, that's, sorry, that's, that's for you matt no it's not enough for you matt <laughs> So I'm going to ask, um, but so what was the question regarding, sorry, Therese, the question the regarding question the ZBA is, when it- did you, has, has the ZBA waited on this? No, because we're, we're waiting for clarity on, how, on what, I, I believe the answer is we're waiting for clarity on, on the intersection. Okay. Uh, clarity about whether the town likes your design for it or whether uh, I'm confused what kind of um, they want to see the plans what kind of clarity David so to be frank up until last Tuesday it was the project's understanding that the town and that the T intersection as proposed was an acceptable solution there was a meeting Tuesday at which the project came away and understood that that was that that was not the the town's understanding. All right. And so it's, it's Tuesday afternoon. The as far as the internal project understood, uh, there was there was going to be a change in direction in how we may, met Farm Road. Can I just ask a quick question? What were there any other traffic advisory meetings or any other traffic meetings since that October one? Just because I watched that video and they talked about the roundabout there. So was there anything after that that was just no that was the not, only one not no it's with the traffic advisory committee. Bill, Bill Riddell looks like he wants to speak. Is that he does he does he doesn't agree with the statement. I mean we've been talking <laughs> about the roundabout from uh, probably the better half of right. five months four months. I mean I and and we provided we provided the comments we provided our desires and and, and our recommendations and it was ignored up to. Uh, you know, the last couple of meetings. So I think it's important to, for us to work through the comments as partners here. So, um, right. you know, and, and, and we have a sizable amount of comments that we provided you too. So I think, you know, we're yeah. going to get together with BSC, I think, to, to kind of go through your current submittal. And then, you know, I, I think it would make sense for the design team to meet with my group and with, um, with BAC, BSC to try to move this along. And officially. that was, I was going to suggest, but just so you understand that, I was trying to carefully say is the project's understanding was 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 okay. it, it 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 sounds like we misinterpreted the the town's desires. Okay, fair enough. You know, I'm not. You know, there was an intent to to ignore our understanding was was what we were presenting would be acceptable. Now, it also, but so does it make sense to continue this until all of this is sorted out? Again, I the 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 rotary is not going to have, in my opinion, a very large or even a barely measurable on the impacts within the buffer zone. But we'll want to see that drawing, yeah. and we'll want to make that evaluation, you know, ourselves because I I think there was a replication area um, yeah. down near the road area that could be impacted. Right, and and so my intent with kind of trying to push this forward is is we is that we're going to provide you those materials so you can make that determination, right? So similar to like the materials 
you know, like we've given you before where we show you, okay, here's what's going on zero to 25. Here's what's happening 25 to, mm -hmm. to, to 100. Here's the impacts to the stormwater. So we can quantify that for you. But is it so that we don't. You just want to proceed on the time stuff. out and stop the stop right now because it, you know, the, it is a large project. It's also a very large site. And we're talking about the last essentially 12 feet of it before it hits Farm Road. Right. There are also, you know, outstanding questions and information we are looking for regarding lighting and trees um, and things of that nature. Right. Which should all be, a, a, unless it's comments that we missed because they came in before our comment letter and our plans were compiled this Thursday, should all be covered in the new submission. Um. I would like to go back to the ZBA submittal information though, quickly, if we can. Um, the regs require you guys to at least apply prior to going through this process and that hasn't happened. And from what I understand, um, but please, you obviously would know this better than I would, is that you're gonna to need to go to the ZBA, not only because of the roundabout, but um, because of the building height and the driveway width of which those seem to have been established a long time ago. So my question is, when do you plan on filing with the ZBA? And am I wrong in those um, the those triggers or waivers that would be required, meaning the building height and the driveway width? And, and let me know if there's something else I missed. So the ZBA is the ZBA. And, and, and I'm not a lawyer, but the public schools are covered under certain jurisdictions. So I, I, I don't have a list of what all those are. It's not always everything that's lit, written in the, in the local zoning bylaw. So we're, we've engaged council to kind of help us navigate through that process. Um, so I, I can't speak to exactly what the relief is we're looking for, if any, for the, for the project. Um, I, again, I'm not sure how that, if we, regs require us to file prior to closing conservation, that's one thing, but the project as proposed, I'm not, I'm not sure how we, you know, I'm not sure why the ZBA, why the, the, what's the particulars of the ZBA question for the conservation here? Okay, so because, let me read it now from the regulations and that might explain why I'm asking these questions. And let me just go back and say in regard to the building height and the driveway, but that information was given to me. I had, I hadn't sought it out just at that past Tuesday meeting from uh, the, some of the consultants here. So um, whether or not that applies to schools or doesn't apply to schools, I actually got that information from you guys. So I feel like they would probably know, maybe not you specifically, but at least part of your team. Um, in regard to the Wetland Protection Act, it says that the requirement under the act to obtain or apply for all obtainable permits, variances, approvals required by the local bylaw with respect to the proposed activity shall mean those that are feasible to obtain at the time of the notice of intent. Goes into more detail. And then the next letter says, if the issuing authority being the Conservation Commission rejects a notice of intent because of failure to obtain or apply for all permits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there is the understanding that, um, and from that language that the applicant is required to, at a minimum, apply to the ZBA prior to submitting the notice of intent. And that's typically the process. And that hasn't happened. So um, it doesn't sound like to me from that meeting that I went to that the trigger for a ZBA filing is the roundabout. It sounded to me like the trigger that was said to me, that information for warranting a ZBA submittal was some other things, like I mentioned, building height, which has not changed and has been the same the whole time. So I think that determining whether or not there needs to be a local permit that goes through this process is really important if we're going to keep moving on in our process. May I speak? This is Julie Berry on behalf of the uh, applicant. Yes. The, uh, uh, nice to meet you all and thank you for your time. Um, I would like to say that there's obviously steps in progress to go before the ZBA. I don't know if uh, Ms. Davis, if what you're referring to is the exemptions under the Dover Amendment for educational uses for zoning requirements. 
So the expectation is that when everything is ready that they were going to be applying to the ZBA, but that largely these requirements are going to be waived because of the Dover Amendment. There certainly isn't any intent here to drag feet, quite the opposite. It's my understanding that the applicant has endeavored to provide all the information that's been requested, even though they've often been hampered in doing so. Uh, there is obviously a necessity to respond to the comments that were just received last week too late to uh, provide written responses, even though it's my understanding that most of the comments there were for information that was requested or certainly gathered by conservation for some time now. So there is an effort being made to get a, uh, in for a revised plan showing the impacts from a rotary. There is an effort being made to respond to all of the comments uh, received from BSC, from the public in general regarding trees, lighting, et cetera. But these comments were all received too late. There will also be uh, an application made to the ZBA that will have an updated plan because a traffic advisory group has to be uh, included as part of the ZBA discussions. So just to be clear, there hasn't been any attempt to drag feet here. There hasn't been any attempt to linger that to the contrary, the applicant is eager to get the relief that they need from the commission and to move on. But certainly the commission is also capable and of indicating that if this uh, ZBA permit is being applied for and needed, that certainly doesn't provide a basis for not moving forward with this notice of intent, which has been pending for quite some time now. Thank I'd you. love to point out that um, I work part-time. I can see we have landscape architects, we have engineers, we have um, lawyers, we have a variety of people, and I work less than 20 hours a week. So there's no intent for me to be dragging my feet and I've been working as diligently as I can be. But so as far as regarding submitting questions late, uh, that's the best I can do with not having a team at my disposal. In regard to whether or not the notice of intent, the what the Conservation Commission can do in regard to the ZBA permitting, et cetera, um, I'm gonna go back to that letter F, which I did read, but I'd like to read again. It says, if the issuing authority, being of course Conservation Commission, rejects a notice of intent because of failure to obtain or apply for all permits, variances, it goes on. So that sentence there means to me that the applicant needs to, at a minimum, file an, an attempt to obtain any of those required permits prior to any issuing of an order of conditions. Nobody's disputing what you read, Ms. Davis. We're simply pointing out that every effort has been made to provide all of the information sought by this commission and will continue to be provided, including the application to the ZBA for relief under the Dover Amendment, waiving all of those requirements anyway. Okay, great. I look forward to receiving that. Thank you. Um, is there a time frame that you think would be reasonable um, to get revised plans and responses to the questions we have submitted? Um, within a week would be for the re re responses, I would hope. But I, 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 what the caveat is, I, I really would like to, to meet with um, the engineering department and, and Dom to make sure we're understanding and completing their responses. Our preliminary review indicates a lot of them we are addressing in the revised materials, but but I just I want to make sure I, you know it's better to kind of hear that from the horse's mouth. And again, the 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 rotary plan and and quantifying those impacts that's a little bit more straightforward. So that that would probably be about a week, and that's within our control completely. So it's you know it's not subject to people going on vacation or anything. Is the February September. Uh, sorry, February 7th meeting, um, reasonable to continue to that point or should we be looking at the following meeting? Oh, no, no, I, it definitely, it, it, especially be since it's January is kind of a funny month. This is actually an extra week now. So I, you know, I think we can get that material in well in advance of 
the Thursday before the, the Tuesday meeting type of. So, thing. but would that give you enough time to meet with as Bill Renault asked for uh, and BSC to talk about the stormwater? I, I, I mean, I can't speak to them. But I, no, I know I, I'm speaking. I know, I know you can't. <laughs> I, I guess, Bill, does that give you enough time? That's an. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Hopefully, they could get it to us before that. I mean, turning it around in two or three days, you know, is a little difficult because there are other commitments that my group has. So, no, you know, I, I mean, I, I I'd hope to meet, I'd hope to meet with you folks this week if we could to kind of go over yeah. your comments and then, and then no, I think that'd be great. Uh, uh, yep, come, and, you know, to make sure we're addressing them correctly. Again, it's some, it's a little easier for us to hear from the horse's mouth, and then again, some of them might have already been addressed if we can point it out so I, if we could if we'd meet with you this week i think we could come there was some resolution on that stuff hopefully the following okay. week which still puts us i think two weeks in advance of the meeting yeah yeah sounds good to me yeah if you want to just email me over sometimes david we'll make that work yeah and then if we can we can either loop dom in or meet them separately or what i don't know what his his schedule is if I may, I, I just recommend sort of adding him in. It probably is most efficient to have you definitely talking together. So, uh, Matt, we're we're getting like every other word, or I am. I'm sorry. Matt just said we should include Dom. Oh yeah, that that's the, that would be the most efficient. <laughs> Right, so we'll keep you on the agenda for February 7th. Um, are there any other questions from the commission? Or Matt? So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, requests out there. Um, and once we get that information back, we're going to need a little bit of time to uh, review it ourselves. Um, and I, I appreciate that. So I guess in my clumsy way what I'm trying to say is is the materials that we've already provided I feel like you should embrace and dive into because I think 99% of what has been under discussion is is, is contained in those um, and, um, so I'm not pushing anyone to do their homework but there was a, there was a good amount of effort into kind of like compile them provide backup for our thinking of what we were doing um, and try to give thoughtful answers to, to to what we understood the questions to be. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, any other questions from the commission? Matt, anything else from you, Matt? At the moment, no, but thank you for, for asking. Bill, do you have any other um, questions or comments? No, at this time. I do see, um, Two hands raised. Uh, Can I just 15? ask one further question? Oh. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, but, uh, Bob. Just take one second. So, Matt, you were not planning on doing a, a response to their response because that would be like too much. If there are issues that I don't think they've adequately addressed, or that you let us know, I take issue with. I'd certainly, yeah, I would do a, okay. an additional response. But and I'll I'll keep you posted on on my review of their response. But it looked pretty, as I said, it, it, it looked pretty comprehensive. And, um, you know, on, on first blush, uh, I feel good about it. So we'll, but I'll certainly keep you posted as I, as I get through it, some detail. Okay, so I, I do see some uh, hands raised. Um, we'll take some questions. We are behind schedule. Um, but uh, Christine, I did see your hand raised first. Yes, thank you. Um, I just had, a, well, I have a few questions, but it, it, is this the time to ask questions um, about the stormwater report? Things that we noted, I mean, I, I did do my homework this weekend and look through the report. Um, so I wondered if you wanted to take those now or, well, we don't have our peer reviewer on the stormwater aspect of it with us here, um, but we do have your letter, Christine, and we will ensure that BSC gets that letter, uh, as does the applicant, and see that we can get those questions um, answered for you. 
Okay. I, I just wanted to say tonight, one of my primary questions was um, whether they could explain the difference in the proposed site pavement between the September and the January reports. Uh, we see quite a difference in that. And I wondered if they could explain what that was attributable to. And um, also just noting the dramatic changes we're seeing from um, existing to post-construction runoff volumes in several of the areas that would drastically alter the wetland habitats. And I noticed that it, a waiver will be requested, they say, regarding the runoff volumes. And, and I, I just urge the commission or the town engineer to just um, note that the characteristics of drainage uh, and flow and overall site hydrology and ecology across a vast area of that hilltop and the bottom of the hill is, is going to change quite a bit. And uh, I urge that the waiver not be supported because of those dramatic changes. Okay, thank you, Christine. Yeah. Kevin, I think your hand was up next. You can take the, uh, Paul, uh, I can wait. Okay, Paul. Good evening, Paul Rebicki, Parker Road, Wakefield. I was looking at the plans on the website and I just wanted a clarification on Initially, I had asked about the driveway going south out to Farm Street. So now they're putting a driveway there. Is there no intent for a sidewalk on the north side? When you get off a of hemlock and you start climbing the hill in the bus or car up to the school, is there any sidewalk plan? To the existing road, hemlock? That Negative. My question is, hemlock, I had spoke to the town engineer. He had told me they're planning to put a sidewalk there years from now on Hemlock once the high school is figured out. My question is, when they're building the new Vogue up on the hill, you will be able to get to the Vogue two different ways. You'll be able to come in off of Farm Street through the south entrance. And you'll be able to come in through the north. When you come in the north, you go past the football field and you turn right to head up the hill on the new campus. You're driving through all that ledge up to the summit where the school is the parking lot on the main level holds over 280 cars not every kid is going to be lined up with the boardwalk or the sidewalk no sidewalk no sidewalk the stairs so the people who are in the parking lot on the far west side are going to be walking up the access road on the north side of the building i don't see a sidewalk i just want to find out is a 300 million dollar school if they're not planning a sidewalk on the north side, I just want to verify that. All right. So, uh, not a question technically for conservation, but can the applicant uh, answer that or anybody? I'd, I'd be happy to uh, chime in and answer that. I'm David Warner, the principal of Warner Larson Landscape Architects, working with DRA Architects. Um, <clears throat> we studied a sidewalk along the driveway um, at that point, but for ADA compliance, um, and the grades come up that driveway being greater than 5% um, and being on the north facing side, um, concerns about uh, keeping that sidewalk that's directly adjacent to a, a roadway de-iced and safe um, at steeper than 5% uh, grades was a serious consideration. Um, <clears throat> that boardwalk um, ramping system and stair system uh, is the accessible route that connects the lower campus to the upper campus and the walkways that lead out to Hemlock Road. So that is the that is the accessible solution for this project. We don't anticipate that students are going to walk up that driveway. Are you going to have signs prohibiting it? Through the chair, um, yeah. that's an operational consideration for the um, for the school, I think that signage is a uh, is a good suggestion um, in terms of making sure that people use the safe, accessible route. That's great, Dave. Thank you for the answer. We're, if if we could, uh, Mr. And Chairman, it's, yeah, it's, again, it's get, not our jurisdiction. Uh, yeah, if we just get the questions in writing, we can answer them. We 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 prefer something like that in writing, if we could, please. <laughs> Okay, um, Kevin, was that all? Did you did have your Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine, Mr. Chairman. We're over okay. our time. 
what? Okay. All right. So we will be continuing till February 7th. Um, we are expecting to get uh, some revised drawings and um, some information back to us before then. Um, and uh, that being said, we'll be moving on to our next topic. Um, thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Rebecca, you good to move on? Yes, I just forwarded um, that those comments, uh, Christine, your comments to the appropriate people for a response. Okay, next up, uh, Article 97 land discussion of proposal by Wakefield Mass, Wakefield Municipal Gas and Light Department to swap land under Article 97. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michael MacArthur representing the Light Department. Uh, as you can observe, Pete Dion is joining us, the, uh, the manager of the Light Department, Dave Paulson, uh, the Light Department's engineer, and John Ogren, uh, the, the project engineer. Uh, uh, to be brief, but to try to touch all the bases, because I know it's getting a little late. Um, we're before you um, in connection with our plans to construct an energy park on Hemlock Road with the goal of uh, reducing the saving, uh, producing savings, producing savings for the, uh, the vocational school and the high school, if that goes forward as planned, um, to um, promote green energy in the form of reduction and uh, substantial reduction in carbon emissions. Uh, through the electrification of the new schools, uh, the, um, the impl implementation of solar energy, and also uh, not incidentally to, uh, to uh, the result of which would be an emergency gathering area, not relying on the grid. We'd have an independent grid uh, set up to provide electricity um, to emergency evacuation areas. Um, as you know, the project is, to, is proposed on a one acre portion of a six acre parcel of town owned land. Uh, we'd be getting an easement if, if everything went according to plan over that one acre portion. Um, there would be no subdivision of the land. Uh, the, the, the town would retain control uh, of the full six acre portion of land. Uh, as you also know, um, we're here because of Article 97. That six acre portion of land was deeded to the town in 1955, quote unquote, uh, well, with a, um, a finance committee recommendation of the town meeting that the the land be acquired for $2,000 for a quote unquote playground purposes. So under article 97 and section four of the EOEA policy, which is applicable to this proposal, <clears throat> um, there are a number of criteria that, that um, we're, we are to address, not the least of which is a, a vote by your commission um, to support the proposal. Um, the overriding goal of the Article 97 policy, as it's stated on page one of the, of the policy, is to ensure that there's no net loss of Article 97 land. And accordingly, uh, one of the principal criteria is to make sure that there is a replacement, uh, or in our case, a, a series of proposals to replace the one acre loss of playground purposed land. Um, and it's certainly environmental considerations are part of that as our open space considerations, as you know, We've tried to address all of those concerns through three main proposals. One is at 16 Ballister Street uh, to construct, uh, to retire an existing industrial use in the form of a substation and to create an, an environmentally friendly, a passive landscape park. Uh, that would involve, as the board knows, since you've taken the time, thank you, to visit all of these sites. Um, There'd be a substantial amount of, of excavation there. There'd be some cleanup work in terms of soils. And then there'd be the construction of a, of a passive landscape park uh, as indicated in the Riley landscaping plan, which is submitted to the, to the commission. Secondly, uh, that they would be the, um, the ACEC area of land, the 2.5 acres off Farm Street, which is under the control of the light department, which we subject to as we propose a permanent conservation restriction, forever preserving that land as is. Um, we all know that 
the way things go, you never know what's going to happen with land. And certainly the way you know, uh, technology develops, that, that acreage of land might well be in the future uh, subject to, to uh, unexpected uses, but not certainly with the conservation restriction. It would be forever preserved. So that would replace the one acre with 2.5 acres. And finally, uh, again, thank you for coming out to look at what's proposed at the end of Rundle Lab and adjacent to Maple Way Playground um, to replace the trees that would be removed on that one, one acre portion of land. It's important to note that not all of the trees would be removed, but there are 128 trees uh, expected to be removed. Um, it was suggested to us that not only should we replace the trees, which we're willing to do and, and propose to do from the start, but that the best form of replacement would be in a canopy fashion. Um, so we found that land. Uh, we all, uh, Rebecca and, and, and our team, uh, together with the, the, um, the DPW, the town DPW, uh, forestry department found the 38,000 square feet of land, which is proposed uh, for the planting of the trees um, in a canopy style um, so that um, we could, it, it, which would also be linked to the town forest via Maple Way uh, playground. So uh, we feel that we've done a lot of work. Uh, we feel that you've done a lot of work um, and we are appreciative of that. Um, we're, we're on the last leg. We have, a, we have a long lead time to try to get this, this work in place so that we can actually achieve our goal as I stated at the, at the outset. As you know, we've been to the town council, the planning board, the FinCon and town meeting. Um, we've had success at, at each of those steps. Um, and we hope that we have success with you uh, in your commission. And um, so uh, we, we would ask for your support. Um, and uh, again, uh, you put a lot of time into this. Uh, that's obvious and it's appreciated. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll conclude my remarks and um, ask for the uh, commission support. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can um, I ask a question, Bob? When sure, you're go ahead, Teresa. So my question was, we went to go visit the property on Maple Way, which is already uh, already owned by the town. And the town is not agreeing for permanent restriction on that land where you're planting the trees. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we did. We did inquire. And it was uh, that was that was not that so you're correct. OK. Right, so there's really no protection there. Um, you know, things could happen to that that lot down the road, um, unfortunately. Um, it's a so it concern. It is a concern of the commission. You know, it sure. would not be turned over to us. Understood. Uh, I don't think I, you're right. It, it, there's there's no permanent commitment. Um, I think it, it it's fair to um, to infer that the town um, in granting permission to plant that amount of trees in that area of, of land would not intend to reverse itself um, quickly, but certainly. Um, the possibility uh, is there in the future. We can't control that. Right. There's no area of town where we could find where we could plant these trees other than this uh, location. And I think Rebecca would, would join me in that um, without a uh, period uh, on town owned land. So this is the only place we can do that. You know, the Ballister uh, property is an eyesore, and I think that is a a very uh, good plan to rejuvenate that and clean it up. Um, it would have to be cleaned up anyways. Um, and that would be, you know, giving a nice green space to the uh, condos and, and apartments in that area. Um, <laughs> right now, there really is nothing. There's an awful lot of development there and that would give a nice uh, passive uh, recreation park uh, in the middle of, of those apartments and condos. So that is a, a nice, um, solution for that location. I do think there's a general feeling with the commission that the, the property at the substation um, is somewhat landlocked, difficult to get to, and very difficult to get to if somebody were wanting to get to that spot. Really the benefit there is it does create a buffer between the neighbors um, and any potential future development on that parcel. That's the main benefit, really. Um, so I know there is some, I guess, concerns, you know, within the commission about that particular parcel. Um, anybody else have any comments? 
Or did I summarize? I think you did a good job of summarizing. I think the issue is the, the property that we're giving the giving up is you know is usable is has really easy access, and so I know you're giving us you know more than twice the amount of property, but it's not this it's not at all comparable because no one will ever use it. And again, it's not our place to provide a benefit to the abutters from from um, development. So it's I mean again it's it's um it's not really comparable land. Rebecca, do you have any um, additional comments or questions? Um, or ideas? <laughs> no, we did look around a lot of places. And I have to tell you that we did have a lot of conversations about trying to figure out something that would work for everybody. Um, I've talked to various people about it. I've looked at the maps. I've sorted out which are town properties and, and which are not. I looked at, you know, we tried, we did try, you know, looking at the tax title properties, all these different things. Um, it's not easy for sure. Um, I think my only disappointment is that, um, the tree replanting, um, that, that couldn't be some type of conservation restriction or not, if it's not turned over to the caring and custody of the conservation commission, that's one that I, I understand where perhaps port members of the town are not willing to relinquish their control over properties. I, I sort of understand that, but it's not really kind of commensurate if you if you plant the tree and in 10 years they decide that we need a hockey rink for something and it has to go there and then it all comes down. You know, not saying that that would happen, just saying that it, it it's just a little disappointing that um, we couldn't have something in order to afford some protection there to make it more equal because temporary tree planting isn't really what we're going for. And I know we tried, everyone tried to figure something out to get this to work right. Um, you know, I was under the impression um, from Steve Mayo, I saw him today that they were really hoping that something would work out. And uh, I just think, I just think that had that been a possibility, had that been something that someone would have um, perhaps agreed to that we would have probably been further in the conversation. I can try to look again. Um, I'm, I don't have any great ideas or solutions. Otherwise, we probably would have heard them by now. Um, but I'm I'm happy to work with these guys and try to find something else that everybody's happy with. You know, the, the, the only comment I would have in, in response, if yeah. I may, is that the town that that you know you're concerned about potentially removing the trees that we're proposing is the same town that has control of the existing trees. Um, and they could remove them without ever coming to the Conservation Commission. Um, and if a hockey rink were to be built, it's actually interesting been proposed for this site, I think, in the past or nearby to this site. So, uh, you know, yeah. the possibility that the town could remove the trees is there now. And, you know, I would, I would, I would submit, it's just an opinion, that if they invite us to plant the trees, if they allow us to plant trees down there now, they certainly don't have any intention of removing them. I'd like to point out I knew nothing about a previous proposal for a hockey rink. That literally, I just took that off the top of my head. Yeah, so I, I, I wanted to know that I did that. not know that. So it's up where the where the energy farm is being proposed back in the seventies. <laughs> there was actually a proposal to put a hockey rink there when rinks were popping up everywhere. Wakefield did not have a rink, and I remember this. You know the discussions and talk. Oh, we're going to get a hockey rink, and it's going to be right there on the that was the high school yeah. of Oak. I yeah, was the. I it's also important to note that the Maple Way area um, was uh, there was a committee in the early 90s, I believe, that was looking to make that soccer field. And the reason that that project was abandoned was because of accessibility. So I don't see the that necessarily changing to make this a better use for something else because they couldn't easily access that road from that area from Arundel and the area from the Maple Way side was simply not big enough to accommodate parking and everything for a big use thing. So that's, you know, that was part of the reason that that whole project failed. So again, in looking at that, I don't think the access from Arundel has been resolved and the Maple Way parking area is only what it is, it is what it is. So the, the opportunity to, to build that place out again in, in some other form is very limited. And that's why that project was abandoned. Well, let me just ask this question, taking that logic, What's the opposition then to providing some type of protection to it if it can't be developed because there isn't good access? We we can't answer that because it's not <laughs> okay. Yeah. Understood. P 
Peter, you're on mute. The the point that you made on the uh, on the uh, on the um, Farm Street property is that anything can happen, and and if it applies to Farm Street, it applies to Maple Way. It is just that you know you can't you know um, um, you know pick it. You know either you know either we assume it doesn't it happen. The hemlock. That's right. So, so we're, we're, we're just trying to replace what the, the land that we're supposed to. I know, but I think qualitatively, I mean, this is this has got to be one of the you know we don't get all these people on the uh, on you know this the the level of interest is indicative of just how valuable this property is that you're going to put this energy and I understand why it's important to you and I understand but I think you can do more and I think that uh, I just think you can do more um, and and specifically I think you can give us more of the land on in back of the uh, in back of the substation. That's what I think. It's yeah, an yeah. area, you know, you, to your, you had said that it's a, it's an area of critical environmental concern, you know, which means it went through a long process, you know, for that, 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 you know, that makes it critically important as a matter of public policy to do what we can to keep that preserved. And, and candidly, I think to not, you know, be dying, you, you know, your, your point about not giving it is, you know, you had said something about the, the rate payers and, and you may want to put up a solar farm, which would destroy that land. And, and you know, in the name of, uh, it, it just seems to me that you're a public utility. It's, this is something, this is this, you know, the, there is a express public policy to keep this open. And this is something that you can do that is in the public good. Um, to preserve all that land, and 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 certainly not to do it in the name of putting up a solar farm. Well, the, not to argue your point, but you know, there is a public policy behind our proposal. Um, it's consistent with the state energy goals. It's it's consistent with or or at least striving to achieve a carbon neutral um, you know, policy. And we can't do it. We we can't make the substantial gain without this one acre parcel. Um, I'm not I, talking about I, the I, one I, acre parcel. I, I, I'm I'm talking, yeah. I, Mike, I'm not talking about the one acre parcel. I'm talking about giving us more land behind the substance. No, I was just going to say that. I understand that that wasn't the point, but yeah, I so just this is just this is this is there's something that you want badly, and I think that we want more. We we want more, and certainly I think that uh, that uh, um, my my concern is that my concern is that this is an area of critical environmental concern. So take um, the. Take the, to to take put it. a solar farm on that, in the name of the you know, in, in in the name of the public good, is it just doesn't make any sense to me. I just got to say, it seems like the exact, you know, and, and if you don't put a solar farm in there, I don't think that land is has any other use. And yeah, I'm just I mean, concerned. I that, just want to say that we we definitely understand the need for the energy farm and its location and the importance of it. And, and we're not arguing that point at all. It, it makes sense, you know, the benefits of the power and the storage of power for the two locations, you know, it's a good thing. It's it's the, what we're getting, I guess, of being offered isn't what we thought. We didn't realize the Maple Way thing was only gonna be the planting of trees and not conveyed to us in any way. Um, and that definitely was disappointing as Rebecca mentioned. Um, I do see some hands raised. I, I will remind you know the public that this is a discussion and not actually a public hearing. Um, but I, I will um, you know entertain some some questions or comments. I don't know who was first. They came up and down. I think Bronwyn, you may have been staying uh, on the longest. So we'll start, I guess, with you. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Bronwyn Delavoe, Eight Cyrus Street. Um, I, I have to echo. Uh, 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 much of what's been been said, I I do not feel that this is an equitable land swap. I I do feel this sort of thing has happened before. Um, I I feel quite frankly that it's like tossing a few crumbs out there and saying, okay, we 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 did our we did our job. It's a little bit like you know presenting a, a swath of uh, dandelions uh, <laughs> to replace a, a, a an heirloom rose bush. Um, it's 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 not really acceptable and i we 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 need to do better i i know you guys have been out there looking there's limited spaces i get it 
But this continues and this happens an awful lot. And the cumulative effect we see all around us, that there comes a time when we really have to just draw the line and say, it, you know, it, it's supposed to be an equitable swap and it isn't. So until you can patch that together, I don't think that 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 this can this can move forward. Um, uh, it's it's just simply not acceptable. And, and the question is, you know, I'm all for the 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 energy park um, uh, and its intent, uh, but that land was supposed to be slated for a playground. What's happening to it now? The very same thing can happen unless it has some really severe protections on it. The same thing could happen to to the land that's uh, being proposed to be swapped now. So I, I don't trust that it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be conservation land forever and ever and ever because I've seen these things overturned before. So I, I wish I, I could... Um, be agreeing with with uh, with the swap, but I I can't, and I have to say, please go back to the drawing board and and give us give us something better. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bronwyn. Um, let's see, Julie Smith Galvin, you had your hand raised next. Thank you, um, Julie Smith Galvin, twenty eight Grafton Street, Wakefield Town Council. Um, I'm this is the first I have heard that the town has said that they would not transfer the land in Maple Way over. And and I don't think I don't think there's anybody in town hall who can say that. I don't think and I'm certainly not speaking for the town council, but I believe that that would be something that would have to go to town meeting. And and so I don't think there's anybody here who can say that we have seriously considered whether or not that land can be transferred. I don't know, Rebecca, whether you have more background on it. But um, I mean, I will tell you that as a member of town council, I am happy to raise that as a viable possibility. Though I, I think the time frame doesn't work with what we're looking here, I, I, I would be willing to do that. Thank you, Julie. Rebecca? Um, I'm wondering if an easier option, and Mike, you might be better to answer this than I would, would be like um, some type of conservation restriction. And I'm not sure um, if that would be an easier process that results in more or less the same result. Um, what do you think on that? Sure. I mean, the, um, the it's not for us to give. We're obviously talking about the um, the tree planting area, right? Yes. And I'm just talking about the mechanism, understanding that you can't say that you would or you wouldn't. I'm just wondering whether or not, if, um, as opposed to transferring uh, property from one department or let's say under the care and custody of one to another if that is challenging procedurally would it be would we get a similar or same result and however the process be easier if you did a conservation restriction for uh that area what i do you think, think and, and, and i don't want to answer it definitively rebecca because i'm right, not that's a, I understand. but i but i believe that um it would be substantially the same it's it's like I, I would say it's analogous to our situation where yeah. one town body is, is is giving another town body an easement, um, you know, a permanent easement, the one acre parcel. I mm -hmm. think it theoretically would be the same if the um, the town council, and I think it would take town meeting action actually, um, were to transfer um, a conservation restriction to another town body. So I think it would be similar. Um, that's okay. just, that's my reaction. Okay. Okay. I, I guess I'll just follow up and say, uh, if we could look into that, I think that's critical. This this energy park is so critical to Wakefield, to climate. Um, and, and I completely understand that you're doing your job to try to find comparable um, land. Um, but I really hope that we can find a solution because losing this energy park would be catastrophic, catastrophic from a, a climate and energy standpoint. Thank you. Right. And, and we agree also with that statement, Julie. Um, we're just looking for what we think is the the fair swap. Completely understood. Thank you for all your work on this. Thank you. Um, Bob, you may have had your hand up next. I did. Uh, Bob Brooks, Summit June Circle. Um, like many of the people here, um, I view the area and uh, I think I think the energy park does have a lot of merit uh, for 
the concept of it. Uh, I think it would be great. But like everybody, um, after walking in the area, I think the the land swap is uh, somewhat not in its favor. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to uh, Maple Way, but uh, I was out in that area before, so I, I kind of understand this aspect of it. The um, the Ballister Street, um, which the station is going to be, it's closed, the substation. And in the discussion down there, they said it was going to be a, a couple hundred thousand dollars to clean that up. Would the uh, Lake Department actually have to clean that up anyway before they do anything to it? Um, so I think they should be cleaning up anyway, regardless of what it's going to be or or trying to you know give that away as a, a park in the future. Uh, the place on um, on uh, off of Farm Street, that substation, um, to me, swapping that area for the amount of area they want to give is like, you know, giving somebody swamp land to build something. There's not much use to it. It's landlocked. Uh, I know we had to get permission from neighbors just to get into that area. Uh, and they did talk about a, a 25 foot uh, buffer zone just to walk up from the street, which to me, uh, poses some safety issues. Um, maybe if they want to uh, close that substation and just give us the whole area, uh, that would that would be a nice place to put a park. But uh, the uh, the light department probably won't do that. I just think that uh, dollars for dollars, uh, it's it's not a fair and equitable uh, trade. Uh, that's about what I have to say for now. Thank you for uh, let me speak again. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, Christine, you have your hand raised. Yes, um, I just wanted to mention that through, coupled with this discussion about replacement land, the other important piece for Article 97 is the alternatives analysis. And I really wish that we had put in to discussing that, you know, in the same sort of we just had put in the same level of transparency and level of effort and discussion and sort of creativity and even ingenuity that that we're all putting in or especially the commission's putting in to identifying replacement land. I mean, I, I have heard practically no discussion about where else the energy part could go. It's not a huge amount of land that you need. And you have a 60 acre site there. And, you know, I just, in terms of transparency about that portion of this Article 97 transfer, there hasn't been any. You know, I sat in on a um, gas and light department meeting last week and they went into executive session to discuss that. So the public really hasn't heard how, you know, how deeply, how uh, rigorously they've looked at alternatives for the energy part. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're looking all over town for replacement yes. land. So I I'd like to hear that. Pete, may, I ask, may I ask Pete, did you, uh, did you approach the, uh, the vocational school and ask them if they would, uh, they would uh, make some land available for the energy park given the, given the benefits they'll receive? Yes, we did. And what did they say? They said that there's not space available on that site. And we, we, we also reached out to the high school building committee as well. And we have, we'll actually have letters if you want, but we've, we've already been told by both sites that we couldn't consider their land. So we had to target the spaces in between. Who owns the parking lot across from Landerkin Field? The town. The town. Was that looked at as an optional place? It was. The, the issue we have right now is with two mates. So they're, they're going to be looking for more parking, not less, because especially for the next five years, you're going to see any, like, for example, behind the high school, if they were to build the other one, that whole parking lot is going to get taken up by construction. And the same is true up at the, the tech right now, because what you're looking at is they're going to eliminate approximately 50, 50 to 100 spaces in the next few weeks as they um, as they begin to build a, a road to go up there, um, mm -hmm. we're going to be moving all our pole line over and they're going to be eliminating a lot of the spaces on the right-hand side of the entry. 
So the parking was a huge issue. And so if we were to take that space, they would be they would be looking to cut trees down in a different space to replace the parking. And what about, about building the... up on a platform of some sort? So it's not hey, just ground Christine? level. Christine, excuse me. Please wait to be called on. Um, Peter, what about the current football field location of the vocational school? There's nothing currently proposed for that. Was that considered as a place for the energy farm? Uh, I, I thought there was there, the plan that we, the last plan that we had showed that there was fields on that. There was playing fields on that whole site. Yeah, I thought the football field was being relocated um, down close to where the current school is, where the new track is going or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Again, we did put in the request at the beginning of all this, and we were told that they needed that whole site. So we, we had to work with what we what we could work with, which was the space kind of in between. And we asked them again, too, after multiple conversations with people asking similar questions, we engaged the uh, Northeast Metro Tech and they had uh, uh, to look at the land and they said that there's just no land available for the energy park without taking more trees down on, on their side. Um, Christine, you have your hand raised. On mute. She's on uh, mute. Excuse me. No, I, it, it's just hard to imagine that, you know, they wouldn't benefit from having the batteries and the infrastructure up there and they could integrate it as part of the uh, educational opportunities for the students. Just have it right there on all the pavement they're going to put up there. So I, I, I just, I, I think, you know, to, to say that the existing or the, the the areas that are planned for parking, well, that's a non-starter. The vote says we can't give you any land of the of the 60 acres or you know that they have. It, it, it's just we're all kind of kind of just accepting all those non-starters, but yet we're just looking into the dark corners of the town to find, you know, these other areas that we can replace where we can replace the tree. So I don't know, it just, just strikes me that the, the same level of effort is not being put into looking at alternatives for the energy park as is for the replacement land. That, that I'll just leave it there. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the commission? So back to the possible conservation restriction or, or easement um, at Maple Way, what would be the next steps for that? Um, I think that's, I'm gonna look into the process and um, I'll just report back to you guys what I find out. Okay. And I think Julie said that she would be willing to take it to the to the town council. Right. Yeah, Rebecca, feel free to reach out. That's what I was just thinking. I'll um I'll just forward the email. Anything I learn, and we can just keep the discussion going. Yep. Uh, for, in the interest of uh, transparency, there's a um. In order for this to move forward, um, we need to file a home, well, not we, but the town needs to file a home rule petition, uh, special legislation, because we would need to, um, in addition to everything else, need a two thirds vote of the legislature uh, to approve the article 27 use. The filing deadline for the new legislative session is January 20th. So we will need, uh, you know, to, I just want you to know, we will, we will need to file uh, for that legislation, based on what we're what we're um, what we're discussing with you now, not that that you know, dictates any sort of action on your part, it doesn't. But I I don't I don't want uh, I don't want <laughs> that to happen without you being aware that it is happening. If you file, will say can, can you amend it after you already have that in, or are you? Um, I think um, I think it can be. I think it can be amended um, until it's approved. 
if it gets approved. So I, so I just want I just wanted to let you know. Right. Thank you. Yep. So it sounds like there's potentially three options here: conservation easement or restriction in Maple Way, um, doing something additional to the land offering at the BB substation site. Um, and lastly, is there any alternative location for the energy farm that has not been thoroughly vetted? Um, I think those are the three things that we've kind of bubbled up. Or is there something else entirely, right? I, I, I don't think there's any option for, okay. for other locations Fair for enough. the energy park. I don't think that should be a consideration. I mean, yeah, that's, thinking, that's definitely not. We we spent over a year yeah. analyzing this, and we've mm -hmm. stated multiple times, you know, that we've looked at all the land around there, and we will be filing with the state uh, our alternative analysis. But there, there's not an alternative to to this energy. Mm -hmm. What would happen is the project would end up failing because it's okay. the, we're not we're it's not we we can't put it anywhere else but in this section between these two schools or it's no longer serving the purpose that it would serve we certainly yeah. wouldn't have chosen an article 97 and, and peter i'm sorry you said you, you're going to be submitting to the state the um, alternative analysis that's what's required yeah okay you're, okay and can you submit that can you send a copy of that to us we will so yeah, just to reiterate, we don't want this project to fail, but we also want to get what we feel is, is a fair swap. Um, and, uh, and Article 97 requires a, a unanimous vote of the Conservation Commission. And I, I think you can tell we're not quite there. No, and you may never get there. I mean, we accept that. Um, we may not never get to where you need to be for your unanimous vote. We accept that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the policy here is that there be no net loss not that there'd be an equitable swap, swap, not that it'd be dollar for dollar, there should be no net loss. Um, and certainly what we're proposing, there is no net loss. Now, I'm not gonna win that argument with you, I, I understand that, but I do wanna state for the record that that is the issue. Yeah. Understood. And I, and I think, you know, it, it is a misnomer to state that the, the, the two and a half acres that we're giving behind that, that with a per, what we can control a permanent, permanent conservation restriction is of real value, and you know that's that that's and it's more than two and a half times the the land that we were asking to take. So, well, we're going to disagree on that, but I will say expanding it is something that that is completely within your control to do, and yeah. and the only reason that you had given to not do it is to is because you may want to. Just you know, to take land that's of that's an area of critical environmental concern. The only design, the only land parcel of land that's designated that in in town, um, and to put a solar farm on there. That just to me is uh, that's something that that's this is within your control to sweeten this, and uh, and I think you should consider doing it. Well, I think to be honest, I mean, I think in fairness, that it didn't come out of my mouth, but the, the discussion relative to the solar park panel apart was that was a, a discussion that had been had prior to well prior to um this whole con the consideration of an energy park um so that was brought up in answer to a question i believe about whether this could ever be used for anything and that was the answer i don't think it was posited as hey mm -hmm. this is what's gonna happen if, mm -hmm. but know. but it is a but it is you know, a stated public interest to preserve that. And it's within the control of the light department to, to make that happen. We so I think it's something that, that uh, and, and, and it is a public utility with, you know, with, uh, you know, that, that should be a good public citizen. So I, I, I think this is something that, very good public I think it's, I think it's a gesture. Yeah, that I, be, I, I disagree I with the shot about not being a good public citizen when we're given three times what we're asking for and the public good of what we're doing in the first place is all about the, conservation and serving the town and the schools. So I, I fully disagree with that concept. I wasn't Paul Price, you think it, that right? the reason we need to keep that land is that we have no idea. Don't forget, the goal is to be net zero by 2050. And we have no idea what's going to be required of us over the And we're, we're talking about a situation right now where we've been talking about one acre of land for over two and a half months. But we're in 
we need to be prepared in the protection of our ratepayers for anything that we might have to do 20 and 30 years down the road. It might include expanding the substation. It might include having to put more batteries. It might include anything. And we, this is the only land that we do own. We're actually, we're willing to give the conservation restriction on the, the Burns Park and you know, in that in the area behind the um, the you know further up the hill, but we need to maintain and protect the ratepayers that secured this land many years ago. And if there is a need to do something more down the road, and we're not you know again we considered the solar park years ago and we didn't do it, but we we have to protect what what may be needed in the future, and so we we can't give up a, you know all of that land. It's simply not possible. Right. I, and that's understood, Peter. I mean, we're trying to protect the area of, you know, environmental concern. You're trying to protect the um, ratepayers. So we almost have conflicting uh, interests in, in a bit here, right? <clears throat> um, so we understand the needs of the energy farm. Um, and I definitely get what you're saying. You know, but the net zero. Um, maybe we'll be able to get a, a conservation easement for Maple Way. Um, maybe you can give something a little bit better accessibility wise at the BB site. I don't know. Um, so Rebecca's going to, you know, look into what she can for the easement. Um, Julie mentioned that she'd also support that. You know that would go a long way towards satisfying our fears that those trees at Maple Way may not be there. Um, you know, with some protection. So yeah, we're again we're kind of stuck in the middle. Um, hear what you're saying, and um, I'm not sure what else there is to say at this point. Rebecca, you got anything else? Uh, not a comment. Actually, just a quick question. Uh Mike, when you file that with um, the Article 97 or whatever, the package that you're going to submit with the state, can you copy me on it? Like, do you send me a copy? Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Yep. That's it. Any other questions from the or comments from the commission? Thank you for um, your time on this. Yeah, thank you. And again, we hear what you're saying. We definitely understand the situation um, and the need. Um, we're, you know, looking out for our interests also, as you are yours, and there is some competition between our interests, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, so yeah, um, any other questions or, or comments from the public? All right, do we want to continue this for any reason? To the next hearing, uh, next date on February 7th. If we do that, maybe by then I can have um, what we're looking for in regard to the mechanism to put a restriction or transfer. I, it, how about this? If I don't have that information yet, then I won't put it on. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? But if I have it, we'll put it on and I'll present it to you guys. Yeah. Does that sound right for everyone? That sounds good. Thank you. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you for your time. And you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Uh, let's see. If there's anybody here for uh, 10 Broadway, it has been uh, postponed. Uh, at the applicant's request until February 7th. And let's see, Rebecca, do you have any other business you'd like to cover? Not that I can think of. Um, <laughs> just reiterating, um, just I'll tell you a little conversation I had um, in regard to 40 Bs. Um, actually, Peter Ogren had said it earlier today um, when discussing Millbrook, but so uh, I had a conversation today regarding um, waiving wet local wetland bylaws under a 40B process. And um, so technically, 
the way I look at this or the way I'm reading it is that the, your um, policy, your 25 notice to policy, which is rooted in the state regulations, um, isn't doesn't meet the requirements of a bylaw. You didn't go to town meeting to have no, a bylaw it, approved. It definitely does not. Yeah. yeah. So it's not. So the way I look at that is that um, in regard to a 40B project that references waiving your policy, I think that language might need to be removed um, from any documents referencing because I don't think that's accurate based on the fact that it's not a wetland bylaw. Um, so having these conversations right now, trying to get it sorted out, just bringing you guys up to speed, um, on that kind of information. Um, so basically, I mean, a 40B doesn't skirt the, um, Wetland Protection Act. It's the same thing, um, for you guys, when you get a 40B project, which you will get in front of you, um, you you would review it in any way that you would review anything else. Um, so they'd be subject to the same requirements as any other project. Yes, because your 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 requirements that you issue are determined based on your assessment of the site and your interpretation on what would result in an impact to that wetland. And it, it varies sometimes based, um, from site to site. So, you know, we use that 25 no disturb zone. I called it in my, you know, brief conversation is kind of like a rule of thumb because it's safe to assume that in most ordinary circumstances, particularly for homeowners, if you have maintained that 25 no disturb zone, it's it's likely that you will meet the requirements of the state law. That might not be the case, um, but you guys review each one individually. So having that policy out there is sort of like a guidance um, on how people can start to design their projects. Um, it's not a right by any means. I mean, you could require more, you could require less, all of which is covered under the state regulations. It's just sort of like an attempt to make it as easy as possible mm -hmm. and with some built-in assumptions. And for single family homes, it really makes sense. And it it, it doesn't seem to be a, a problem. Um, I, I do often have the conversation that it is a guidance or a policy and that as much as some people say that it's a guidance and policy, therefore they can go within that zero to 25 feet. I think it's equally important to remember that you can also require a 50 foot no disturb zone if you can demonstrate that that's what's necessary in order to protect the wetland. So it's sort of this sliding scale. It's kind of hard, I think, for some because it's not hard and fast. It makes it a little bit more challenging sometimes, I think, for people to understand how it's a little bit more subjective, whether it be soil types, whether it be the vegetation that's present. Maybe it's based on steep slopes. Maybe it depends on whether or not there's an outstanding resource water or a vernal pool or some of these other things. And you guys take all of that information and put it together and then determine whether or not the 25 foot should be big or small, et cetera, or what the existing conditions are. Um, so just a lot of things to think about. I think they'll be coming around pretty soon. Um, just wanted to bring that um, to the forefront. And other than that, I don't have a heck of a lot. I think we'll probably have some tree stuff next time, but um, that's all I got. So and Rebecca, with the ZBA waiving the tree policy and the 25 foot setback for North Ave, what does that actually mean? I don't think they can. Yeah, because it's not a local permit. It's not a local bylaw. Right. right, right. So they can waive it as to their as to their requirements, but not as to our requirements, right? I and not be maybe the attorneys would weigh in on this better than I would. Uh, I would suggest, and what I did suggest is they take the language out. Okay. okay. Because it's hard to mm -hmm. waive something that doesn't technically exist. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean by that? Like they're referencing waiving a policy, but the policy isn't a bylaw. They can waive a bylaw, but they can't waive a state regulation. And the policy is sort of like a guidance to meet the state regulation. So my thought was the best way is to just take that out altogether. That, But I don't know if they will do that. That would just be my suggestion. I agree. And they did waive the 50 foot stream setback. Okay. Right. And that wasn't that noted in there? Um, Can they? Yes, that's their that's their um, 
zoning bylaw. That's their requirement. It's not ours. Yes. So yes, they could certainly do that. And in the event that Wakefield had a local wetland bylaw, which of course would have to be stricter than the state law, then the ZBA would have the authority under that 40B, that comprehensive permit, they would have the authority to, from what I understand, to waive the, a local wetland bylaw. But we don't technically have that. So um, based everything, all your decisions are, you issue a state permit in order of conditions is on the DEP form. It's really a state permit under the state regulations. So that doesn't get waived by anybody. And it's, and when they have a comprehensive permit or a 40B, there, it, it doesn't, they're not, there are no exemptions for that under the state wetland protection act. You're going to review it the same way you review anything else. Um, so I think I sent you guys some of that information. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. I sent you my comments, previous comments. Um, yes. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of some of the conversations. Um, other than that, I'm not sure I have very much else. Let me just take a quick peek. Was there an, ever an attempt to have a bylaw put in place? Yes. Yes. And it failed? Yes. yes. And we haven't tried since? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <We've tried twice. laughs> and it's not worth trying again? No, no. no I wouldn't ever say that. Um, it's just maybe rewording or modifying, you know, what we really want to get or what's most important. The very first one um, failed because there was uh, a monetary fine proposed and that scared a lot of people. Um, and then as recently as, I don't know, three, four years, three years ago, maybe two years ago, we tried again. Um, you did? Did you guys do that before it was gone? More than three. Okay. Yeah. It was like 13 or 15. No. Uh, well, we did it then. We, we, we did no, that one, was, yes. It was, no, it was since I've been back on the board. So Correct. We have done it twice, and it didn't pass. Jimmy presented it, I remember, uh, and endorsed it at town meeting, um, and it didn't and it, pass. It failed just by a few votes. Yeah. That was when that was a 20, Sullivan was... That was a 25 foot uh, setback, wasn't it? Was, was that, that when what? Dave Sullivan was on the board? I don't no. I think it was after. It was after. But to answer your question, Ken, twice we've tried, twice we've right. failed, but there were different um, bylaws, different language. And we probably learned a lot from both of them. And I guess it wouldn't even matter considering they can get struck, struck down, struck down. Yeah, I mean, anything's on the table. Right? No, I think this is probably a better time to try. The problem is it needs to be simplified. Yes. It was way too um, complex the last couple of go arounds. And I think keeping it to one or two topics would make it a much easier sell. And, and especially highlighting that the commission still has the discretion to issue a variance to that bylaw. That, yeah, that was, that was my next question. Even with the bylaw, we still have the flexibility to allow right. within 25 feet. It's just yes. a little bit more teeth. Yeah, yes. and I think times have changed also, and I think there'd be a lot more support now than there was uh, prior. I think you're right. Um, It'd be interesting, but I would also like to um, think about what happens when, like what I've noticed with the no disturb policy is that there's no more the assumption that there'll be an assessment, on, not by you guys, meaning like the applicant or whatever, that you guys will determine when you look at this site and review the plans of what would be an appropriate no disturb. That's indeed what's, what we're talking about. But, and what happens with the policy is that people just put that 25 no disturb on there and say, okay, I'm good. Well, I've done everything well, they've asked well, as me we, to As we found out tonight, not. When I, when I asked the question, why, why couldn't that be moved over? Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, yeah, or not. Or they say, you know, I you end up getting a plan that shows a retaining wall at 26 feet. You know what I mean? So, and they say, well, 
I've done the 25 foot, which I understand how that makes sense when you're trying, especially when you have a lot of other um, requirements, maybe in other boards that are very, you know, 10 feet here, 15 feet here, 20, and all you have to do is meet that number. This, you know, this is the challenge, I think, of this science-based wetland protection act. You're assessing each process, each thing individually based on what you know and what's already there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's harder. And it's, it's, it just requires you guys to justify your decision a little bit more, but um, I don't know, just if you guys decide to end up doing a bylaw, just something to consider or have language in there. I think Judy, you kind of were just alluding to that, that this is still a little bit open to interpretation. And that's the part that everybody hates. They don't want interpretation. They want to just say, I want it to be this, and I'm going to meet this, and this is this. And sometimes that's hard to do. It's yeah. science, not engineering, unfortunately. Yeah, but I think it works. Stuff. I think it works both ways because if people know that there's discretion, then mm -hmm. I think that helps that they don't see it as a hard. Right. I think it's a much more difficult sell if it's a hard and fast twenty five feet. If okay. you say, yeah, the minute will will at a minimum review it at twenty five feet, but it could go up to one hundred feet if the commission so chooses. Mm -hmm. But as long as there's some discretion in there. I think or statements that say existing conditions could be will be factored in. So if you have a, a site, right. you've got pavement up to five feet of the, you know, a BVW, let's say, and then they propose a project that reduces that pavement and pulls it back to 17 feet away. It's it is kind of an improvement, but it wouldn't meet that 25 feet. So for you guys, right. you, wanna, you know, look at that individually. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of factors that that yeah. influence mm -hmm. that. Hey, um, I, I see some other people still here, and I'm wondering, was there something else that was scheduled? I did um, say ten Broadway. Ten Broadway was postponed. Postponed. Um, John, are you here for anything else? You just may have walked away from his computer. Okay. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm just listening. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rebecca, can I can I ask an unrelated, quick unrelated question? The yeah. uh, the intersection, you know, the rotary, I think, is going to be. This just goes to the area of critical environmental. I don't concern. think we can talk about that. If it's not the public hearing, Peter. Okay. Yeah. I, the, I guess the generic question that I will ask then is: yeah. is does the uh, does the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs need to get involved when you have when there's you know, if if there is anything that's going to occur in an area of critical economic concern. That's a, just a question that I have. Um, I'm looking at the regulation; and it's a little ambiguous. Yes, I would have. I, I'm not as obviously not as familiar with those regulations, but um, I I would say that. You know, it's an interesting thing. I just did the, have this conversation relatively recently about what the role of the Conservation Commission is and when it comes to sort of overlapping or potential other permits that may be required. And um, I don't I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. There's so ACT information that you're under the Wetland Protection Act and we would fulfill that. I mean, ACEC designation, if it's all private money and private land, I don't think that affords you more protection. I think if if there's state monies involved, that's when things are triggered under. Yeah, um, it'll trigger a MEPA. It'll trigger MEPA. Under MEPA. And, and it's. Oh, I'm just it, looking it, at a state. One of the considerations, you know, it's like right. if you have an outstanding resource water, even if it's private, you lend more consideration to something that's more sensitive. So it's just another kind yeah. of layer that you need to consider mm -hmm. when you're thinking about these types of things. Like I'm just reading the. Uh, or, I'm just reading a statement. It lists a bunch of, you know, it lists a bunch of, you know, considerations that, you know, things what, to be protected. Where are you reading it from, Peter? I'm reading right from the regulation. I can forward yeah. it to you if you want. Uh, the, the, regulation? the ACEC regulation? Yeah. Yeah. If you just, yeah, if you just Google ACEC, it'll pull the regulations right up. Because I, that's, if I could find them. Uh, it's not, it's the, not a uh, reg. It's, it's more of a designation, right? Yeah. Well, so, this is a regulation, but it just says that all... E EOEEA, which is Executive Office of Environmental Affairs Agency, shall subject the projects of federal, state, and local agencies and private parties to the closest scrutiny to assure that the above standards are met for any action subject to their jurisdiction. So I just didn't know what are we an AC? Are we an E? Are we an EOEEA agency? Oh, there's a definition, and I'll just ask this. 
you know, DEP falls under E, right. under, but we, we're separate. Okay, so we're separate. Okay, so all I wanted to say is that's that's what it's so it, it it kind of says that they're supposed to do that, but it doesn't say how they're put on notice that there's something there is an action that's going to be taken in the area. So, so when we review as a commission and, and Rebecca does it, and then it goes up to DEP regional, they have the authority over that, right? Rebecca, does that make sense? They have the authority over whether or not there's other regulations that get triggered. Is that what you're asking me? What's the question? Uh, Sorry. I don't know if I followed it completely. No, I don't know what I'm asking either. All right, for that. <laughs> hey, I do see some other uh, guests that are still with us, and I just want to be 100% sure. We have no other business. I see um, Jim Holland, and I see Megan McDonough also. Nothing? No other business that we're missing? Okay. And Bob, you're just hanging out with us too? <laughs> I actually have, I have one question. Is it? Can I ask one question? Just, Who is I was it? curious if the um if any of the if the, any of that land swap land which we're not on right now is um uh I don't know where Wakefield's environmental justice community or communities are and is that a consideration? No, for it, it's not in it's not in an environmental justice area. No. Okay, because there is one somewhere in Wakefield, I think, but I, I'm going to school myself on that just out of interest. Thank you so much. It moved to recently, um, Judy and I were talking about that, that where the environmental justice area is and was. And you can go into Mass Mapper, that Mass GIS site, and put that, there's a layer on that you can click and it'll show you where it is. Yep. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much. Sure. Uh, Jim Holland, did you have a question? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Rebecca, anything else? Uh, not that I can think of. Judy? Um, just the conservation steward program. It's still in a holding pattern. I haven't heard back from Tom Mullen. So I don't know if that means that there is nothing to talk about. Um, so I'm kind of hesitant to start asking for volunteers if it's going to become an when, issue. Did you follow up with, what was it, did you email Tom recently? Um, I, yeah, I, well, in November and then again, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And the question had to do with um, having volunteers on town property, right? Yeah, is a waiver required, anything yeah. like that? I saw one town that did it. Most towns don't seem to have that requirement. Okay. And I know he's mentioned before, um, whatever the situation is when anyone walks on public land. So I don't know that they would, it, it doesn't seem that they would need a waiver, but. Yeah, because we know. have trails, right? So whatever insurance or. or Right, and these people are have. just people that are walking the trails anyways. So I don't know if right. the, two, the two lawyers on the commission can. <laughs> is there Give any me some clarity? <laughs> I mean, they're not town employees, so. You know, like I mean, when, we, it, when the Boy Scouts cleaned up, right? Did did they yeah. have? Did we do anything? No, no. And the commission that's doesn't that's have to sign wrong. a waiver when they go out to do site visits, so right. I kind of like into that. Mm -hmm. Well, the site visit is in publicly owned land; it's private land. But did did the yeah. Boy Scouts ask if they needed anything? No. They don't contact the town saying, "Hey, we're doing this." They just go. No, they do, do but they oh, yeah, no, never a discussion. Okay. of whether they needed a, any kind of waiver. Or... I think it was always like, oh, that's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, Judy, I've been telling people, you know, as many people as I can about potentially doing this, including the scouts. So um, I'm trying. But... Judy, I think all you could do is 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 just follow up with Tom. Yeah. I, yeah. And it sounds I, like, and you, he... you know, so in a couple more weeks, I mean. Yeah. Can you copy me on the email, the next one you send? Yeah, I will. Thank you. So, I mean, I don't know how that works because every school is town-owned property, right? And you've got hundreds and hundreds right. of kids and teachers. Nobody's signing a hold homeless form or-, or right. No, waiver. exactly. But what happens if somebody gets hurt? I mean, somebody's always trying to sue somebody. <laughs> right, but wouldn't that be the case if anyone is just a regular person walking a trail? Yes. Right. Or using a yeah, I don't playground know whether... equipment? 
a, a, a volunteer status does anything to that, Judy. That's all. Right, right. Okay. So that's, that's I think that's the issue. Okay. Right, right. Because um, ESC does have some people apparently that are interested. That's why I wanted to kind of get things rolling now. Before yeah, we spring. don't want to lose that interest, have those people lose exactly. interest. Exactly, exactly. So maybe yeah, I'll once spring comes, it'll be a good time to get them. Get them right. Engaged. So I might just ask Steve Mayo and oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he'll, I've talked to him about similar issues before and he didn't see any. So maybe I can get him to weigh in on this and then it'll be done. And if that happens, then I'll email you all and let you know that we're moving forward. If you think it'd be helpful to have one of us email too, I mean, I don't know, Judy. I mean, you you have, you have more sway than we do in the town. So. No, I don't think I have any. <laughs> That's very <laughs> obvious. <laughs> um, but I'm also looking at um, Concord. I may have sent it to you guys before. They have a um, sustainability and climate resilience handbook, like what you can do in your own backyard to help the situation. And they had a grant, um, they put it together. And now Melrose, Stoneham, and Winchester have also, uh, no, Melrose, Arlington, Winchester, no, Stoneham, Arlington, and Winchester have received a grant from MAPC to do a similar um, workbook, handbook. So I'm trying to look into ways that Wakefield can maybe team up with Linfield and maybe Melrose. What, a handbook of what you can do in your, I'm sorry, Judy, a handbook of what you can do in your backyard? Yeah, it's about sustainable planting, things like that. And it's for oh, composting, and composting. Developers. What's that? Composting? Not composting, no. It's oh, about snags? planting. Snags? Oh, okay. Snags, snags. yeah, snags would be a topic. <laughs> but I think it would Who's be helpful. Snags? Especially if we had a grant. Does we feel have like curbside composting? Yes. Yeah. yeah, there is. It also has a policy. It has a you, you could purchase um big because we have two of them, big composting bins. Yeah. Um, and do that yourself. Yeah. Yep, you can buy so, rain barrels too. Right, do all those things. All right, anything else, Judy? Nope, that's it. So we'll see everyone next week, right? Tuesday. Tuesday. So just a reminder that Elaine has to leave um, at 6.30, so we should get there promptly if we want to see Elaine. Oh, oh, okay. So wait, let me just make sure it's on my our calendar. Stay yeah, so on. Peter, you have to get there at 6 if you want to see Elaine. Okay. I do want to see Elaine. So it's, okay, so it's 6. Ah, perfect. It's right on my calendar, so. Yeah. <laughs> you got to take anything? the 510 if you're in town that day, the 510. Okay, I'll see you on the train of 510. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then um, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll or make that motion. Oh, second. <laughs> Bob will make that motion. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Ken? Yes. Paul? Yes. Peter? Yes. Teresa? Yes. And I also vote to adjourn. Rebecca, are you going to talk Tuesday. to Jim again to see how she how he's doing? Or yeah, I'll check in with him tomorrow. Already. All right. See everybody Tuesday. Thank yep. you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.